epic contest in BA. Great show tonight, right? Who was it that once said, never? <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. wait. Why? The coaches, man. They, never underestimate the heart of a champion. Not Trent Balky, though. <laughs> Rudy Tomjanovich, and, and never. That tonight's game in the NBA, that was exemplary of that statement to the bone. Steph Curry, legendary. Ooh-wee. That was good. And I knew he was watching it, too. So I said, but, but wait, but wait. What is, I thought they was dead meat. They might win this. And, and pretty soon you watch it. Damn. They pull that stuff off? <laughs> and, I, and no matter who you root for, uh, uh, the, the, you're not, uh, not participating in this particular NBA final. This contest is fun. Anyway, fam, let's get to nine football right away. It's getting late. People out <laughs> Midwest, like we got a conference conversation yesterday. Who was that to say, man? Wait till after the game's over, Rod Bow, man. It's getting late out here, man. It's Friday. It's okay. <laughs> But Niners' potential X factors, I thought I'd do that tonight, only because of the fact that we've only had a little bit to look at. But it is way too early uh, to make assessments after only a couple of Niners' minicamp workouts about player personnel. But that's not going to stop us. Why would it? <laughs> this is what we do. However, one thing that can be measured is the intensity a uh, given players displaying uh, at this early point before the final cut going into the 2022 20, season. Tonight, go into the phones after going over some media reports uh, about some encouraging observations, very encouraging in some cases, about Jawan Jennings, Samuel Lee Bookham, and Jake Brindle. Yeah, I said Jake Brindle. Let me get right into it then. Jawan Jennings has been impressive, according to reports out of minicamp. Uh, that are sounding very positive regarding him. Coach Shanahan spoke about Jennings on Tuesday, saying, quote, I'm extremely confident in Juwan. I think if anyone watched our games at the end of last season, not many people covered him. He got open. He had aggressive hands. He got up the field. He blocked well. And you know how important that is in Kyle Shanahan's system. He goes on to say Juwan was a guy we had a lot of hope for coming into stuff. He had some setbacks with injuries, but once he got healthy and he got his opportunity when Mo Mohamed Sanu, of course, uh, went down last year, he took off. And, and this offseason, him and NBA, the first day they got here, they've had as good at, of an offseason as they've had since they got into the league. Ooh, and they're as good as they've been right now, both of them, unquote. That's a pretty shining uh, testimony coming from Coach Shanahan. That sounds pretty enthusiastic, especially for Coach Shanahan. You know? Ask if JJ's body type benefits him. Shanahan answered, quote, it's all how you use it. He does have a bigger body, but he plays big. He's fairness going over the middle. But that doesn't matter if you can't separate. And what's cool about Juwan, he's got some unique running styles. But just watch him. He separates more than probably all the other guys, unquote. Wait. Wait. Say what? Did you catch that last part? Let me repeat that. Coach Shanahan said Mrs. Jennings' baby boy, Jawan, separates more than every 49ers card-carrying wide receiver currently on this roster. This is why I said you, <laughs> you know, you, you, you think about that. Coach says, you realize that is extremely impressive for a bigger guy, right? Uh, now, if that's true, Juwan Jennings is better than anybody would have even imagined. I mean, he I, you look at him playing, boy, he can play some ball. But to that magnitude? Got to bow when you see Jennings on the street. Bow to him. Debo Samuels next to you. Brandon Ayuk's next to you. George Kittle's next to you. They say, you Separate better than any one of them. Whoa! <laughs> Fam, if J.D. plays in 2022 like he did the last half of 2021, uh, the 49ers are going to have a dangerous passing game, no doubt about it. F- number 15, ain't that him? How many of them jerseys are going to sell this year if he takes off like he's anticipated to do so? Ooh. So I put down X factors. Juwan may be more than an X factor. He's going to play like he's been playing. And if he's going to get better, and you imagine he would, as long as he stays healthy, coming into this third season. Um, 
Samson and Ibukum, of whom has been uh, raving about Drake Jackson, had a good mini cap himself. Ibukum is praising Drake J, but don't get it twisted. Samson isn't giving up anything. He ain't the spot on the edge opposite Bosa was hard earned and seriously important to him. Even though he did give his thoughts on the rookie, D. Jackson, saying, quote, damn, damn. I thought I thought about a record. I better not repeat that, though. <laughs> but you never mind. I'll just go ahead. Damn, he's, damn, he's good. He's going to be a key factor in this defense. But apparently, Bookham had a strong minicamp himself. Not only were there positive reports from the media, but Coach Ryan spoke well of Ibukum's offseason. As Coach said, quote, I think Samson, towards the end of last year, he definitely started to ascend as far as when it comes to pressuring the quarterback. He started to gain a lot of pressure. I think the more comfortable he got just playing the position, he's picked up exactly where he has left off. Here in camp, he's been doing a really good job of continuing that. Getting pressure, doing those things, all the things that we ask him to do. So Samson is definitely a guy who's going to get better up front, unquote. If you book him, can add to what he was uh, doing last season toward the end, and everybody said something about that and noticed it because all during the course of the year, before the last few weeks when it was really important, I, a lot of people saying the same thing I was. Has anybody seen Samson with Put out an APB on him. Where's that dude, man? If anybody sees him, please report wherever you saw him to Santa Clara, 49er headquarters. Ain't nobody seen him. In that. All of a sudden, he shows up. Uh, I, can't, I can still remember that. What's that sack he got? Us? Hey, that was Ibuka on that play. Hey. And pretty soon, you're doing that a lot. Pretty soon, I stopped saying it because Ibuka was becoming instrumental on a lot of those drives. Um, but if Ibuka can do what he did was uh, doing late last season, Niners pass for us has a chance to be – Wait for it. More dynamic than it was in 2019. And you and I both know in 2019 that pass for us. Ask Aaron Rodgers was ruthless. Ruthless. Some especially good news for those of us crying uncontrollably about the old line. Let's get right to this, man, because I saved the worst for last. But it is good news, actually. Offensive line coach Chris Forrester likes Jake Brindle. Yeah, he does. And Coach Shanahan does, too. Now, coaches always like to play. They're not going to say anything bad about them unless they really suck. But if Coach Yannick gets in there, you know, Kyle doesn't want to. Yeah, Kyle's not going to say anything unless you really are good. The team seems to be high on Brindle. Shanahan spoke about him during the week. Coach Shanahan said, quote, Jake made our team last year as our backup center, and if you do that, you better believe that all backup guys have the ability to start. And then when they, when they get that opportunity, how long can they do it for question mark but we had a lot of confidence in Jake last year to make the team and if Alex Mack would have ever missed a game or something we would have we wouldn't have hesitated and we would have gone into that game very confident with him unquote now before you fact check that because I said I thought I remembered and it was actually the year before last I thought I remembered Alex not playing a game and we had (laughs) Brunskill in there at center that was year before last Alex Mack made every game. Uh, coach Anahan was asked if it was offensive line coach Chris Forrester who pushed to get Brindle to San Francisco. Coach Anahan responded by saying, quote, Chris is the one that brought Brindle to our attention. Just him having him in Miami. He was a big fan of his there. Uh, we got him in, I believe, during the COVID year. Uh, he had some things uh, that he opted out, went right down to that last minute. We were able to get back get him back and last year was our first year with him and and yeah uh, Chris talked highly of him and he's been better than uh, advertised uh, quote Alex Mack is gone if, if you'd be like me that center spot fam coach Forster is, uh, is a talented offensive line coach so the fact that he likes Brindle so much should be encouraging to us as Niner fans and if the Niners do indeed pass on adding a veteran like J.C. Treader, uh, you can believe the team is confident in what Brindle can do. And the 49ers are probably going to do that. Uh, I don't see them bringing in Trotter. Trey Lance also spoke on Brindle's ability to handle the center position, saying, quote, yeah, Jake handles it honestly for the most part. Uh, that's kind of how our offensive works. offense works. There's things that we can do from a quarterback standpoint, but for the most part, the center is making the calls every play. Uh, past that, I got to spend a lot of time with Jake. 
obviously, I took all my reps pretty much with Jake. And Jimmy was with Alex last year. Obviously, sad. I wanted to play with Alex for sure. But I am super excited for Jake. Jake's three, three lockers down for me were together. One of the first two guys in every morning. Jake is, and I know he's one of the last guys to leave. So the work, so he works super hard, and his athletic ability to one thing is one thing I think that stands out about him. Unquote. You know, watch. I was watching Lombardi break down in this. He is very athletic. In fact, coming out of U, uh, UCLA, he looked. He didn't really look like an offensive lineman. He was pretty pretty light. Actually, he's gotten his weight up to NFL standards for that position, and he looks pretty solid. We didn't get to see him last year, but. There's no way to – I don't – they're not making this stuff up. I don't want to see uh, Brunskill uh, back at center. So if Jake Brindle could actually do this job, oh, good. Here's a, it doesn't guarantee that Jake B. will succeed by all accounts, but uh, Brindle's a smart player with some experience and is a very good athlete. This is this plays – this is this is this is very serious. Coach Williams said of Brindle, quote, almost like talking to a coach, unquote. Fam – how important is that virtue when it comes to navigating Coach Kyle Shanahan's offensive system? You know it's huge. You can't be just another idiot off the street or some guy with a low IQ of football to play center in Kyle Shanahan's system. It is, it's, it's, it's intricate. It can be elaborate. You've got to be able to read really quickly and know what applies. It, it, it's a tough job. Also, how, how about the fact that at this hour, the report out of Santa Clara, <laughs> very few injuries. And, but you know what? If there's any fan base that cannot take that, we can never take that for granted. Every time you look up, somebody got hurt. I said, oh, man, what is He was eating a bowl of cereal and he pulled a neck muscle? Are you kidding me? You know, these, hey, that's silly. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if I heard that. Rookie receiver Danny Gray tweaked a hamstring that kept him out of the minicamp. That's it, though. That's it. I know I'm going in a couple of days, but still. And, you know, superhero speed receivers always seem to have this problem. Their body can't really handle their speed. So, you know, there, if anybody ever comes up with something they can just give guys who run four, three, and less uh, where they can find a place to just go in and buy body parts – you know, hamstrings are the first thing they do is twang a hamstring. Other than that, though, fan, not much was reported in the way of injuries. Uh, this, of course, is excellent news, and this is a refreshing change from previous seasons, especially last year when a couple of players were lost for the season during OTAs. We've not done a damn thing yet, and these guys are out for the season. It may be why Coach Shannon canceled minicamp last year and probably why he cut the minicamp to a micro minicamp this workout this year. And thank you, Coach Shannon. Do whatever you can. Look upon and let, use every experience you've had and try to avoid the massive injuries you guys get before this game season even starts. Ah, But, fam, more pleasantly, Jawan Jennings. Early favorite for that X Factor. I'm, I'm thinking he could be that guy. All right? Ibukum versus, he's like almost like Todd Burr. Ibukum versus the world. That dude's got competition coming at him this year. And I'm not even talking about just Drake. I, Drake Jackson, I, you know, but look at the rest of that room. Some of those guys, all those guys, are, those edge rushers are not going to make it. I think Ibukum makes it. Jackson for sure makes it. How many more are you going to keep? Nick Bosa, don't even talk about it. There's no point. Nick Bosa's in. But who else? And, of course, Jake Brindle. Could he be the answer to our prayers? Could he be the guy that is going to solidify that, that, that offensive line so we can stop crying about that each and every week? We could be talking about the most pleasant subject in the world. And somebody will come out of nowhere. Because sometimes I avoid and dodge it on purpose. Some people call this, yeah, Rumble, but you know what that offensive line, man? Oh, man. Did you have to mention that? <laughs> it comes big show this weekly or his show show announcement. Big show says breaking news. This is still Jimmy Garoppolo's team. <laughs> oh, show thanks for that contribution. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, um. 
let me put on my ears and say hello to and because the video, I mean, I was waiting on the video because, like, you know, said he's going to be watching it. I, ain't coming. I may not be able to make it. I'm going to be watching that game. And me, though, I told you I was going to be watching that game as well. That game was damn good. Oh, go! My God! Like, God, I was like, man, this feels like two people having a heart attack watching this goddamn game. I'm it like, just man. wouldn't, it, it was cool, it wouldn't be decided. And, and, and the Warriors remained cool and calm, coming down to the last few minutes. Steph Curry, oh, right the heart of the basket, Swish. I said, look at that. The greatest shooter of all time, doing his thing. Anyway, let's get into this. Yeah, yeah, back to that, but you know, yeah. We just, we just need to win, a lot win, of win us a Super Bowl. I know. I mean, you got it's a little oh, loud. I, just, I, got the, I got the fan going. Okay. I got. Let me dust my phone. Really giving a lot more time. You're immediately on the spot. Is that better? Yeah. There I you hear, go. I can hear you and your voice in the background. Okay. Video. Okay. I'm, I'm, there's TV. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at Jawan Jennings and thinking if they go talk about him like that, maybe we might have got something going here. Because you know B.A. and Debo go take care of business. Uh, I'm looking for that third dude. It looks like it's going to be J.J. Because the, the, the rookie already done pulled up lame. So he'll have that problem all year long, and you know it. <laughs> there's, no, there's no point yeah. lying about it or even getting positive or getting thinking, you know. So, you know, what are you thinking here? He book him? Is he going to hold everybody back? Uh, it just seems like, you know, it seems like they're, they're ready. Again, you know, it seems like, you know, basically unfinished business, you know, not to blame anything on Jimmy, but it's getting to the point where, you know what, they, they're starting to look like they kind of believe in, uh, in uh, Trey, so mm. just to see what goes on from there, you know. It's like, okay, we can we may have faith in them. So all the guys are ready, you know, they got a couple of extra pieces we needed. So. Just the only odd part is that it seems like uh, the line might hold up, but see what's going on with that, but, you know, it's just, as more we get closer to training camp, we'll see what what mm. uh, what else comes out. But it, it's just more to the point where, like, you know, these guys are ready to fire it up, waiting for the season. They can't wait. So. Mm. Shit, I can't, can't wait. wait. You know, we're right yeah, around the corner. We can't wait. Yeah. You think Jake Brindle's going to be okay, though? That's a very important spot in Kyle Shannon's offense. We see what happens uh, in 2020 when the center is, is, is half-ass. So, you know. Yeah, no. So we'll see. Like I said, it's just it's just a point of waiting now. Now it's just, we see a couple highlights, a couple of things guys are saying. Yeah, we like mm -hmm. this guy. You know, they're doing their job. This man. So it's just trying to wait it out now. It's just like I said, the closer we get, can't wait. See what's mm -hmm. going on. It's just it's just a waiting. We're just waiting at this point. So yeah, we're about to yeah. be in July. A couple more weeks we'll be in July. So after, I feel as right. soon as August hits, man, we're we're, we're all in the door. Just get July out of the way. And we're in August. July is right there. Is to hurry up. And they're going to take August <laughs> off. So we got like two weeks to go before the before it gets serious. Serious out there. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just waiting on it. Oh, man. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, I mean, and looking at, I mean, you, know, you can name any other X Factors. I'm, 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 I'm thinking Tyrion uh, might be that guy. Uh, Trey. Uh, Sermon, he could I, come know, out of nowhere. I, I, the other part I want to see is our running backs. Who's really going to be explosive as running backs? You know, you look at Mitchell, but then, you know, it just what was the uh, what was the new running back we got? I forget his name. Uh, is it TDP uh, Tyrion, or is it, or is it uh, Tyrion? Tyrion Davis Price. Okay, okay, there you go. So TDP, yeah. But yeah, TDP, no, I want to see yeah. see what he's going to do. You know, this ain't the big dude. He's a big running back, so. I, you know, I want to see what he can do. Is he going to be able to run run over guys? Is he going to use them as, a, you know, to get the first down on short yardage? Is he, you know, what is he going to do? Are he going for the goal line? You mm. know, I, I want to see what he can do. If saying he's big and fast, it's going to be hard to bring down. You know, I just, I just want to see our running backs too because that, that's another part of the game. I like a lot of running backs when you get break yards, you know. I mean, again, it's going to be about the offensive man. line, though, and how, fa and how fast can he work so, together know, it, with him. It, it is. But as long as they, they all, all you need, really need to hold is just for your line to hold and get you that, uh, you know, couple of seconds to run back and run through the holes. You yeah. always look at Gore. Gore, the line wasn't always great, but what was able, he was able to find a hole and then shoot that a hole and mm -hmm. get us a first down and get us a touchdown. So that's all you need. He, you, you know you what? Need the, the line to hold enough 
you know what though? I mean, he Frank Gore knew his offensive line. This is the only, the only thing I worry about about TDP and all the guys on that line is they're working with some new guys, and you need to know how to work off these offensive linemen that you're working with. And I hope they get a lot of reps in that, no, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. can know tendencies. I mean, yeah, it's chemistry. It'll take you know, it'll take yeah. time once they get chemistry. But I think it, I think with me, I, I think for me, I think what I see is as soon as we get in the training camp, getting ready mm-hmm. to roll, mm-hmm. at least for preseason, they'll be like, oh, well, let's go, you know. Getting another line better, you know, it, it would help. It just, I, like I said, it just, I want, I want to see the run game. Besides yeah, the, you know, wait. the receivers and everything, it's just my thing is the run game. Yeah. yeah. It's good. And one of them's got to be coming out of the backfield to take some passes, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, man, that's. That's probably going to be Elijah Mitchell. He did a real good job at that last year. It's probably going to be him. We, I mean, we just got to worry about his durability. Can he stand it? Because they had to put him in yeah, the refrigerator no, and ice him no, down. He did pretty every good. Week. Yeah. Yeah. He was getting close up. There. He was getting close to a thousand yards, but you know, he ended up getting hurt. So, it's just that's why we have so many running backs. They always, you know, they get hurt so easily. But you know, we just need one stable enough to. to, to it, I mean, with this rotation. With uh, with our rotation, you know, they should we shouldn't get as many hurts. So hopefully, see what happens. Oh. But yeah, they remember. I, I need a couple we, of extra you know, defensive linemen. Down so easy. Three go into the practice squad. I, I, you know, if you had to put three running backs on the practice squad right now, who would they be? You got your three starters. I mean, I'm a, let's trade on this. Who, who you got? Who you keep it out on the active roster? Maybe uh, Jeff Wilson Jr., uh, Jermichael Hasty, and who's the other? There's another one that I put on the practice squad. Uh, I can't remember his name. I know we have the three. We have uh, Mitchell, Shrek, GDP. I can't remember. Is there another one we didn't get? We got undrafted. Yeah, I'm. You know, you and got uh, me going on that one. Um. Because I just trying to, you know what? I just realized I'm not sure how many running backs we got. Because you just went down to three guys, and you know you got T- TDP, Elijah Mitchell. You mentioned Jeffrey Wilson yeah, Jr. Yeah, and then you got you got Jeffrey Wilson Jr. And then you got. Uh, you see, don't forget about Trey Sermon. Hasty. You know how we like to forget about Trey. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, I counted him in as a three. Cause that that would, that would be the three. You got my, you got uh, you got Elijah, you got uh, Trey, and then you have. Uh, TDP, and then, like you said, the backup guys would either be Jeff Wilson Jr., Jermichael Hasty. There's one more. I can't remember. I know we have six. can't remember what the other guy is. Did you mention Trey Sermon yet? Back. Yeah, I did. I was in the three. I, he was, he's your, I think he's he your was top three, right? He was there last. Yeah, the top three would be TDP, uh, Mitchell, and uh, uh, Trey. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sermon. Yeah. So then okay. you got Wilson. Huh. So yeah, the other two with Jermichael Hasten. Now I know there's one more. We have six. Can't remember who the sixth guy is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think there is one more guy. I'm not sure who that is. Hasten. And let's Wilson, say Sherman doesn't really the work out. You bring in Jeff Wilson. We'll play him with Jeff Wilson. Yeah, let Wilson stay on so ice because, yeah. uh, you know, when he does come in, he acts like he's mad as hell. Oh, y'all ain't going to let me play? Okay, I'm going to tell you what. Give me the ball. You know, and he goes yeah, out enough. there and goes nuts. So I do like him. I, ah. Uh, I, mean, I think you, know, you can rotate him on certain games, bring him yeah. in and out on certain games. Like, you know what, you come in right. this game, you know what, sit out this one, come in here. That's what I was getting ready. For that. Like, depending who we're playing, activate yeah. him. Exactly what I was getting ready to say, too. Exactly what I'm thinking. Because, you know, Wilson could catch out of the backfield, like, like probably the best on the team. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was yeah. the reason we beat Arizona that one year. Threw him the ball. Jimmy threw him the ball. and went for the test, and he won he, the game. He, you uh, know what? He does that a lot. So, you know. And that, was that all, and that was one play. That was crazy. That was the only play he came in for all day. at the end of the game. How'd you get it? I one? said, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, let, me, did, let me see. You got your one hit. And it comes in and wins the game. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to see you Sunday, okay? All right, let's go. Hopefully, you know, Warriors can pull this game on Monday. I tell you, man. We're talking about the Niners, too. You know? We, we need the Super Bowl. Uh, they're playing games. We do. Oh, J- one last thing. I was listening to this podcast. They, they were talking about Kaepernick and Alex. They said the year we went to the championship game, Alex lost it. And then the following year, when they got rid of Alex or got hurt, Kaepernick went to the Super Bowl. So I'm like, and they brought up that scenario yep. with uh, Trey History. and Jimmy. I was like, is this going to be another scenario with the championship? And then we go to the Super Bowl with Trey? Lightning uh, that'd strikes. be nice, but, you know, Lightning strikes. Yeah. We'll see. You know, see what happens. We'll see. All they right. got a good team this year. Yeah, I'm good. All right. All right, Phil. All right. Talk to you later. It's Emilio. <laughs> and Big Show says, Hasty Wilson Jr. practice squad, they're always injured. <laughs> I know, Hasty, man. Hasty's, and you know what? Hasty is actually worse than Wilson show. I agree. This is top four. Mitchell, Davis, Price, Sermon, Jordan Mason. 
I think that's who we were, we were losing, Emilio. Jordan Mason. Well, that's serious. Big Show's top four. Jordan Mason makes it. I can't wait till things get in the way so we can see some scrimmaging. Uh, we can find out more about Jordan Mason. I do remember hearing about some things uh, about him. So, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Jack, get on in here, Jack. Jack is, Jack, had me laughing so hard yesterday, man. About uh, them hosts. Slappable host. <laughs> no slappable comedians. God dang it. God damn it. <laughs> Jack, where you at? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 stick to my, I stick to my word, man. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me, Jack? Hello? Hello? Jack? Hello? Hello? Can you hear oh, me? Jack, Jack can you you're, hear not, me? you're not receiving me. I can hear you clearly, though. Is anybody there? <laughs> no, you know what? People yes. ask me that all the time. Is he, uh, yeah, the I, lights I can on, hear you he... loud. I can hear you loud and oh, clear. I was say, okay, good. I can hear you, Jack. I was going to say, because people ask me about that. Lights on, but ain't nobody home. <laughs> I hate that insult. <laughs> 16 and it, 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 in, 16, in 1692, today in history, the first witch was hung. Bridget, uh, what's that girl's name? Uh, uh, Bridget no uh, uh, Bishop. <laughs> okay. Okay. This, but, this, but, okay, go ahead. Connected. But, but, where, but also today, 40 years ago, E.T. E. T. came out. Okay. E.T. Came out in theaters forty years ago. Now, now, it, now, going back to what we were talking about yesterday, is is Drake Jackson? I, I don't think I'm a Drake Drake Jackson hater or a Pac-12 <laughs> hater, or you know, I'm just saying, you know, the fact that we've got Andre Carter and you know Solomon Thomas and all these dudes as defensive ends, and we're all high on these dudes. That you know, I'm hoping that that he proved us wrong. So yeah. is he is he is he gonna hang? <laughs> or is he going to fly is, is the thing. And you know what? I, I hope that he does fly because, yeah. you know what, he, he he got some tremendous upside. But my thing is, if you're in the Pac-12, Rombo, if you're in the Pac-12 and, and you're going for, for, from your sophomore to junior season and, and, and you're going down to five and a half sacks, and you're not going up against left tackles in the SEC. You're going up against Pac-12 left uh, left tackles and oh. guards and stuff like that. So my yeah. thing is, like, you know, if this guy is that good, how, how did he uh, 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 regress so much? But, yeah. but you know what? I'm not going to talk too much about it. I, I, think, I think he has a, ma- a chance with uh, 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 our D-line Jack. coach, wait, 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 with Jack. Bosa, with Jack, Jack. Uh, 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 D'Amico Ryan, to I just want to defend him. And, and I hope that he does something. Jack, Jack, let me, I, let me a quick defense for him, though. Remember, the SC – Coaching staff was absolutely ridiculously bad. They fired the whole bunch of them. When's the last time an entire crew got let go? I, the coaching staff had a lot to do with him losing weight. They probably had him in bizarre schemes. Uh, any number of things that coaches can do to ruin uh, the chances of a team winning. I think this is what he was up against. Because you, you make a very valid point. Pac-12, you got five sacks. That means you probably are not NFL worthy. So, but you know what? But I, as I say, when I, I've never heard of an entire staff being fired. I've never heard of that. So they must have really sucked. And of course, that reflects on the players' uh, uh, performances as well. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, what I'm saying the Oregon defensive end. Look at look at what he, look at what he did. So I mean, I'm just saying they're in the same damn Pac-12. So so something it's something to look into. But you know what? This dude does. Get you excited? Will he fly like ET? Will he hang like a Salem witch? <laughs> Let's see. But moving on, man, I, I really, you know, like TDP. I love me some TDP, man. This guy got that Bo Jackson nastiness. Oh, he will just bang your ass and take it to the house. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not as quick, but he's very physical. And, and uh, uh, man, I'm telling you, boy, when, when, when this guy when this guy gets going, he's going he's going to be like that. Like I told y'all, Legarrette Blunt. So this is my favorite offensive player that we got, man. So I'm That's hoping right. that he shines. And the undrafted uh, free free agent uh, from Georgia Tech, who you mentioned. 
So, so, mm-hmm. so we're stacked. But you know, again, we, we unless it's a guy like this who I feel that Anthony Anthony Lynn was you know pounding on the table, uh, uh, like uh, uh, I forgot who it was back in the day who pounded on the table for uh, Patrick Willis. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I think it was Anthony Lynn that said, "You know what? I give me this guy, and this this is how we're gonna we're, we're gonna do this shit because Devo don't want to run as much. So that's why they really picked this stuff. So you know, man. I mean, it's only the books and stuff to talk about with uh, Drake right now. You know, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, mm-hmm. shit. I, I feel like uh, we got an exciting backfield. Um, our cornerback crew. You know, if Barrett gets healthy." God damn, we might have oh, the best uh, one-two punch yeah. at the cornerback position. Oh, so true. I, I don't know how long uh, they, they're not telling you how far along Brett is in in his re- recovery. So you know, but you're right. We went from bad. I mean, when it rains and pours, Jack. Now all of a sudden we got all kind of talent back there in that secondary. You know, and I still think my favorite is that rookie with that four-three speed. Oh yeah. Because I like what I saw from him last year. Um, he's Matt Mosley. Mosley, Mosley three, three, six, two, three. You know, I mean, that, that INT versus the Rams. I mean, there, there's Matthew Stafford fading back. He's got one of the greatest wide receivers in, in football history. Odell Beckham Jr. streaking down the side like, no! It's intercepted! I said, wait, wait, that cannot be the same dude, man. It is... Every week, he was all over the ball and just couldn't make the play. But nobody was beating him deep. Nobody was getting anything on him, not just cheap. And I says, man, we got something here. We got something here. So you know what? You're right. That secondary could be special. Jack? Man, Rombo, what kind of alcohol are you sitting on tonight? <laughs> Sober me up. What 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 was it that I uh, that I spoke of that, 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 that just sounded drunk? <laughs> Jack, man, this this dude already had these injuries uh, uh, back in Texas. You know what I'm saying? And 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 so so I'm just I'm just like you know what this this shit was already. In the in the making, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's so much other ways we could have gone, but I mean, hey, hey, I just don't want it to be another Jalen Hurd where we have to, you know, wait for this guy, wait for this guy, and say, oh shit, that, there goes another third round down the goddamn drain. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think it might have he might have been a second round Jalen Hurd, but still, you know, I mean, you know, with these third. receivers and stuff, man, that just yeah. just a little fragile, so fragile, it's just little things just get them hurt, man. It's just ticks me off, man. God. Damn, man. What the hell's up with that? With Shanahan's uh, uh, picks at that position, Rumble. You know, he, he's, he's not as bad as Trent Baalke, though, at least. Um, you know, Baalke just quit. He wouldn't even draft a wide receiver anymore. So, you know, <laughs> wide re- Jack, you know what? Wide receivers are very difficult. Quarterback and wide receiver are tough. Wide receiver may be tougher than that, but cornerbacks and wide receivers are hard to pick. Some are going to make it, but the biggest percentage of them are not going to make it. You know, so that's a tough spot. Uh, I got, I got sympathy for him. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. But you know what, boo, to to everybody, man, to everybody, I'm sticking, I'm sticking to my word. My girlfriend's on on ice. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I said, listen, if Drake Jackson shows out, I'm sorry, babe, but I'm I'm flying Rombo out here, and we're we gonna see the Slap Brothers together. I'm bringing his ass because he's gonna prove me wrong if Drake Jackson does shine during the preseason. But you know what? Even 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 right. you know what I'm saying? Boomer T talking about uh, on the chats. I see you know yeah. Barack O'Niner, Niner by nature. All, all these people. Uh, Booker T talking about wrestling, four time state champion. All I want to say is back in the days, and I'm class of '01. It was not, there was mostly geeks geeks wrestling at my high school. So so listen, if, if there was a guy like me and Booker T, I'm sorry, but even with my wingspan, I got a seven pound wingspan. I'll probably shut you down in a wrestling right now, man. That's how good of a wrestler I could have been. But most of the greater athletes, Booker T, was playing other stuff, playing other positions. That's what we're gonna end it with, man. 
Y'all, okay, y'all, Jack. Y- y'all, <laughs> y'all in the chats tell me right now, is, is, is uh, 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 Dre Jackson going to fly or is he going to be hanged? <laughs> Jack, I'm out, baby. I love when you do this, Jack. This is going to be good. The season's going to be fun Rombo, just for this. book your right. ticket, baby. All right. Book your ticket. Rumble, Rumble, book your I'm ticket. I'm book ready. your ticket, baby. You coming to London. <laughs> I love it. Out. All right. Night, Jack. <laughs> there he goes. Jack makes – every year you can always depend on Jack making bold predictions in some direction one way or the other. Uh, but I'm still – Ambry Thomas, if he makes this that starting group, wouldn't it be out crazy? Barack O'Neill says, I gave Niner by Nature's mama a pile driver. You're like, oh, my God. I said, I'm not supposed to read that. What's going on with you guys? I mean, I, no mama jokes. Come on, Barack. Hey, and let's go to uh, Renzo. Hey, Renzo down in – wait, wait. North Florida. Renzo! Did I get that right? Greetings from North Florida. Yes! Got it. Renzo, because I kept having from What's South Florida. On? And then you start telling me about the weather where you're at. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Not for Florida, but uh, <laughs> North Florida. Renzo! I haven't talked to you in a minute. What's happening? What's happening, oh, wait, wait, man? You know I'm on them swing chills. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm so on that's on why we only get to hear from you every yeah. now and then. Uh-uh. Yeah, well, I'm off for the week now, so I'm on right. the long haul. All right, because we're looking at uh, you know this team's taking taking form, you know, and yep, uh, yep. looking at some of the guys that are coming into camp, looking hungry, hungry, coming in. This is jamming oh, yeah. from day one. No dragon butt going after the show. Look, I'm Juwan Jennings, and I'm here to let everybody know. Don't be looking at Debo and Brandon Ayuk like I'm just a third piece piece of meat on the plate. Juwan Jennings is looking good in camp already, and coach likes him saying things like, nobody separates better than Juwan Jennings. <laughs> what? Really? So, you know, and you got Samuel Bookham has been talking a lot about Drake. If you might have heard Jack, Jack does not fully believe in Drake Jackson because he's from the division that he's in from school. Uh, there's lots of reasons for that. I, I, I think that, that, that Jack may be pausing. During the season, say thing. All right, guys, you got me. Drake Jackson's everything he was advertised as. <laughs> and Jake Brittle's looking like he may be all right at center. Things are looking better. Have you been keeping up with this stuff? Yes. Um, the center, I heard he, he's been like the one been working with Trey since like Trey was, what, was like second team or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, they were they working got, together last year all the time. So they know each other, which is they, really a big plus. Yeah, they got the, the chemistry, so. As a coach, I will keep that together. That's just yeah. me. Mm-hmm. But uh, Jawan Jennings, oh man, hey, <laughs> Jawan say he he trying to be that little that little third option like, yeah. on the bench. Hey, give me the ball. You know we done drafted a wide receiver. Jawan trying to get some burn, man. <laughs> you know, and he made hey. some great plays last year. Oh, he made some great plays. He made he, he was like the Kendrick Bourne. Remember when Kendrick used to come in, man? You took you, the hey. Yeah, go ahead, my then. thoughts, Rombo. Go ahead. <laughs> you hit it right on the head, Rombo. You hit it right on the head. He he was our Kendrick Bourne. Yes, he was. See, oh. and and I think he doesn't have those dramatic. I'm not. I didn't really pay close attention last year because I didn't remember Jerron. He may have dropped one or two. I remember one time uh, he couldn't fight through a, a, a coverage, but that's the only thing I remember that. That he had a, tr- a problem with, but yeah, you know, as time goes on, man, and each year he he's going to get better and better. He's going to figure it out. And like they say, the game going to slow down for him. And mm-hmm. He's going to be better. I like, you know, he's, and he, I, I've been, I've been hearing the media uh, hop on this Trey Wayne, this this Trey Lance train, like really mm-hmm. hard, and all of a mm-hmm. sudden they, since they done been opening up practice to the media, man, and yeah. he was like, yo, even D'Amico's like, hey, man, this guy's like whipping the ball. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a good thing, too, because, you know, if if we came in the season and, and he hadn't – so he, he did have a few issues last year. They weren't serious, but he did have something to need correcting and would be – would have been – he would have been exploited on some of them uh, by NFL defenses. But you know what? Some of those things – uh, look like they're improving. And they actually look like they're improving in a Texas game. He wasn't miss, missing wide open windows and running. Uh, he was throwing the ball. 
uh, getting rid of it. This is my this is my thing with him last year. He was processing, but you know he was a rookie. He's only had one, as I said, one year of college. Those things are supposed to be like that, you know. But now uh, he's looking like that. He may be over that hump and on to the next phase in his development. Right. So and I, I remember one time I was listening to uh, uh, one of the podcasts with. Oh man, I forget one of the guys he played with the Niners, and he was. I think he played like safety or something. He was saying like, oh, uh, oh like we. Take but he didn't play them. I'm thinking of Eric Crocker. I don't know. Did Crocker? Play? Did no, Crocker play? no, no, oh. no, 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 no. Uh, Eric Davis, Davis. Oh, oh uh, Eric Davis. What? What, what, what you yeah. about? What you? About? I don't listen to him as much as I, I'd like to. He was I can't get a chance. Like, he was saying like everybody's thinking like yeah we need a quarterback to all uh, throw the deep ball. He was like man in the NFL you don't defense is not going to let you take shots down the field like that. When you have your chance you take it but other than that man you're not going to be throwing balls like down the field I've like that. I've been all the trying time. to tell people people think that that, that, that we could just could be just raining raining the ball deep down yeah. there. you you do that <laughs> when the opportunity presents itself and it has to be set up. Uh, <laughs> you don't be just don't bombing. You will get picked. You look worse than Stafford. Yeah. This is oh. not. This is not Madden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and you know. I, I try to keep up with all y'all podcasts because, bro, I, you know, I be working throughout during the week. So when I'm mm. at work, I even have it up. But I'm hearing good good things though. I'm, I'm just ready for the season. You know, I wish the season would never end. Every year, it, it, it's. It, Rizzo, is how depressing is it in January, in February, knowing that things are about to come to an end? Because we've been high for three or four months, right? And all of a sudden, well, we're about to enter the playoff week. Even then, I, I feel a little, uh-oh. Well, okay, let's just get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, so, you know. God. Before we go, well, bro, this is what to me. Even though we lost in the playoff NFC championship game, I'm like, bro, we got to wait a whole nother year yeah. to get back to that game. I'm like, yo, it's unbearable just waiting. It's yeah. only February. Winter's not even fully over yet. We got to see spring. <laughs> we got to see summer. I know. <laughs> we got to – fall is three seasons away. Oh. <sighs> I'm about, to get, uh, I'm about to be like the whole this side and more games. I'm like, bro, I can't. This is boredom. I can't keep going through this, bro. I have no football for all these months. Like, hey. Rizzo, <laughs> and you, more have, games. you have those other leagues. See, Rizzo, that's the problem. I NF, After the NFL, <laughs> everybody else is like brand B. I can't watch other people's football. Yeah. You know, it's not. It just doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work. You know? Yeah, you know. I don't like the downgrade. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 Vince McMahon's league. I was expecting Vince McMahon's league to be a little better than it was. It, it folded, you know. It's I wouldn't even – if I had a, a, a billions to waste, like Elon Musk or something, I would be not opening up no football league. Maybe baseball if I have to have a, a, a ball club and I can't get an NFL, MLB, or NBA. But football, man, you hey. ain't going to – and another thing, Rumble, do you think this new uh, – you see where Walmart and the uh, the owner from Walmart and them bought the Broncos. <laughs> and and played record money. Boy, Broncos – like, yo. Dude's got endless money. He don't care about no yeah. salary cap. Watch to see the Broncos go take off now. Russell Wilson is going to have to do their season training camp at Walmart. Like, hey, season <laughs> In the <reading>. parking lot. <laughs> 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 trying to give out free tickets to sell out the stadium. Like, hey, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> they could, it, 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 it was original. They're gonna have they could parade some of the best dressed people that like to shop at Walmart. You got to get them people out there. <laughs> I don't All know. All the same, Walmart <laughs> Broncos jerseys in every Walmart. That's what's gonna happen. You like this? Is uh, like, man. Yeah. Hey, but it's all great to hear from you. Oh, you're gonna be off all week. I'll be back Sunday and looking for you. Okay. All right. Right, okay, because on uh, Monday is my birthday, so I got to catch up with y'all. All right. I'll be looking for you. All right, Renzo. Good to hear All from right. you, fam. Talk to you later. Thank you. Y'all be safe. There he is. There's, there's Renzo from North Florida. Make no mistake, not South Florida. And there he is. And without any further ado, bring in the maestro, the papa, a bam and boom. It's Papa Dragon! Ah. What's up, 
brown phone. <laughs> Pop always it's comes in with an entry. <laughs> what is going on, man? I like what you did with the place. I like it. Looks good. Was that was that number that number sixteen? Oh, look at that number sixteen undefeated in the Super Bowls right next yes. to number ten. <laughs> Mom, I already told you, he comes down ceremoniously. When he, Upon the day he exits, it will be a big deal. Because, I, I, Pop, I got respect for this guy. We, we, we went to two, we've been right in the mix twice out of the last three seasons. That means something to me. I appreciate that. Oh, man. You I know, what? know, I know, but I'm still. Just saying, hey, I just I see Mr. Undefeated at the Super Bowl, and I see Mr. Defeated. Hey, but you know what? Yeah. It's all good. It's all good because you know what? I, I yeah. think he's going to give – I think he's giving a team up this year. Oh. I think he's going to give up. I think he's he's passing the team run down the track. Yeah, well, no doubt, uh, no doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this many plans and just all say, "Well, change your mind. Jimmy's gonna start." Uh, yeah, no, probably not. Unless, unless uh, Trey blows out something <laughs> <laughs> between now and week one, you never know. Everybody, everybody no, well, that, uh, yeah, because I didn't see that injury coming last year, you know. You know, you, you never think, nobody thinks about injuries, though. I really don't feel like being bothered with that thought, you know what I mean? So when it does happen, I'm always like, oh, hell no. I mean, it don't matter who's on a team. As soon as they get hurt, oh, no. It's just a yuck feeling. You know what, you have <sighs> people like Tanya Harding that make people think about injuries. Who? You know, Tanya Harding. I'll tell you, <laughs> you bring her up. <laughs> Papa, never <laughs> connected. I mean, Tanya Harding, why does she make you remember injuries or think about injuries? <laughs> uh, oh, man. Anyway, um, hey, what are we talking about? We're talking about some football, right? Let's talk about some yeah. football. Let's talk about some football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm get, I find things get pumped up about Pop. You know me, man. I, Juwan Jennings. I'm telling you, when Kyle Shanahan said, the boy is the best I got out here at getting separation, I said, what? Really? I mean, I'm, yeah. okay. Yeah, he's, he's pretty crafty. And, yeah. I was, sold on him. I was sold on him last last season when he got punched in the mouth and smiled at the guy. Wasn't he awesome? <laughs> laughing at you. <laughs> Pop, the, yeah, Pop <laughs> but, 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 I just want to pull around that in a second. Because the thing is, Pop, it, just imagine, you got, you're getting into a fight with some damn fool. He hits you, and you look at him. <laughs> you come on, man! You don't want to fight. That's the best you can do. <laughs> I, the dude needs to leave. Somebody in the mouth and they smile at you. <laughs> you barking up the wrong tree, Jack. You need saying. to be concerned. <laughs> you need to be concerned. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean nothing, man. I was just playing. Well, hey, man, what's your name, man? <laughs> That's like a iron. Back the folks too crowd. He was like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I was like, "I loved it. I loved it." Now, oh. thinking, who are you the most concerned about? I know who you're happy with. I'm not trying Juan to bring this down. You book him. Who is it? Who you you, I'm the least uh, least happy with Trey Sermon. If you want to bring that up, I'm. You know, Trey Sermon bothered me last year. After having one run, and then I watched him do his best imitation of Carlos Hyde, and I said, "Wait a minute, what are you doing, man? There's thirty dudes piled up there. Why did you run in that direction? You didn't see any other avenue you could take." I said, kind of bothered me. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, have you seen him? In, have you seen any or heard anything about him in camp? Not one word. <laughs> they talk about TDP like he's a second right. coming of the Lord, and you're right. Well, I mean, there's a hype train there. I mean, I'm just saying, there, I, understood, yeah. I understood why they took him, but you know, it, it's he's it's going to take quite a bit for him to to wrangle that job away from Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? No, so, and that's not. I thought that wasn't the plan anyway. They're trying to get a thunder and lightning oh, thing going on there. Uh, nobody's well, taking Elijah Mitchell uh, spot. Well, according to PFF, you know, we are the sixth worst uh, running back room in the league. Sixth worst. So, yes. Because the, you know why? Because those guys aren't established yet. A lot of teams got established running tandems. Maybe that's oh, it. No, no, we got established scrubs. 
You just said it yourself, Trey Sermon back there. <laughs> dancing right what is that dancing the hole nobody dances in the hole anymore ba- fam come on Trey it's 2022 <laughs> hey look all I'm saying is is that you know I mean obviously hopefully there'll be an injection of competition and a may the best man win kind of a deal mm. you know obviously Mitchell is, is the number one but really they want TDP to take that job Otherwise, they wouldn't have drafted him so high. Um, Trey Sermon well, is probably can be third. He can probably share third, uh, third down back duties with um, with Juice. Is what I'm thinking. But I'm you know, you, you got Pop. I just want to trade with you on that though. I'm I'm uh, Sermon is going to the practice squad. Jeffy Wilson, Jeffy Wilson Jr. gets. I, he's my top three. I Sermon. I'll, I'll watch him in preseason, but right now my decision on him is him and Hasty get to keep each other company over there in the corner. Well, I'll tell you who my biggest disappointment is. You're not going to guess, but I- I'll put it this way. No one's heard a, a peep out of him during all these OTAs and, and, and mini camp either. One player. Can't imagine. George Kittle. Hey. Oh. <laughs> He, he he elaborate. Line. Is George he's not, he's not yeah. doing no drills? George just watching. He gets hurt too much, though, Pop. You know, I, I, George Kittle it spends a, a certain amount of time off the field every year. Sh- Sh- Kyle sure. might be trying to keep him from finding a way to. Because George, he, I don't know what he's doing out there. If he's doing something, is he going too far? But he George will get hurt. He ain't help coaching. He, he's not catching passes and passing to the quarterback. He ain't doing that. Yeah. He's just out there. Like, and he just got he just got resigned too. Yeah, so it was the last year, right? For me, he's a concern for me because I think that when healthy, he could be a big part of his offense. But oh well, yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm real concerned about, about about George because you know I just I don't have confidence that he can stay healthy. Well, no, I mean, I, uh, see, and that's why I, I, I'd like to see him in bubble wrap. Uh, Tied up with steel chains, so he won't break out. Uh, he's still got to get him. Oh. He's got to get some work in. He's uh, still got to get him. I mean, eventually, he's got to play. He's got to get yeah. out there anyway. And mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, is he gonna? I think the one thing he's got going good for him is a change in quarterback. Because, I, you know, I know you love Jimmy. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know you do. Yeah. But man, Jimmy threw he he throws people into danger all the damn time. Mm. I mean, all the time. He 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 throwing the ball. He throws people into danger. He's supposed to throw the ball away so the player can protect himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully some of the things that we're seeing right now coming out of mini camp, you know, with Trey throwing at over seventy five percent completion percentage, something Jimmy G has never done. <laughs> God, um, let us not compare training camp stats, okay? And uh, okay. Uh, uh, can we wait a minute on that before you, you start you blast blasting you know my what? boy Jimmy? You know, no, no, you're right. I'm not trying to blast them. I'm just saying that it's encouraging. Can I, can I, can I just say it's encouraging? Can I say that? Is that, is that fair? That it's encouraging that Don't, he's throwing more touchdowns and interceptions? Let, let me get Allen Iverson on the phone. We got Allen's phone oh. number? I want him to talk to oh. Pop for a minute. Oh. You know? have, I, I probably got more money than Allen Iverson got right now. <laughs> he has been in trouble lately. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's not hard. Hey, but 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 that that being said, I really do think that um, that that you know things are from that standpoint things are going good. Yeah. Obviously, we can't really see what the running backs are going to do until they get to the preseason. So yeah. We got an offensive line that needs to gel. Yeah. Um, Aaron Banks looks good from what I've seen. He looks good. He looks quick. He looks very fit. Uh, that's, that's, he looks like the same player. That's why they leaned him down. The pop, uh, the pop, as you know, we we got to go. Though I always love to hear from you. You you, you always bring something special. <laughs> okay. you know, Although Jack out did you tonight with the what, the first witch. There was was that the first witch back in sixteen <laughs> hundred? What Jack? Hey, hey. 
You know what? Between Jack and the Big Show, you got something special going on. <laughs> you got something special. You put those two guys together. Well, Good Lord. I know. I'll see you Sunday, Pop. You're my best to right. boom and bam and that lovely wife. Y'all have a great yes. night. Hey, shout out to you and yours. Shout out to production. Mm. Please like to subscribe to Rumble Sports. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate you, fam. Looking forward to Sunday. Uh, just call me Papa. <laughs> <laughs> call, call, call me Big Jack, Papa. Jack. All right. <laughs> and, and speaking of the big show, big show says Jimmy throws a deep ball. We just didn't have a 4-3 uh, depressant to play the calls for the deep ball. Just saying. I know, you know, for every every shot taken at Jimmy, the pushback is real easy. So, you know, the big show, you, you get, I love it. Big show's, he, he's getting himself into trouble, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> Thanks for the show. Hey, hey, Jay. Rombo, what's up? Jimmy could throw a deep ball. He could throw uh, 75 yards. You no, know? I'm pretty sure he can, right, Rombo? I don't know about 75, but I did see Jimmy hit Debo with one of the prettiest shots downfield over 45. I think it was 49 yards. Wait, which one, Rombo? The yeah, that one that, that – uh, it was like – it was perfectly what? thrown. It was on the inside where the defender couldn't get it. Debo had the defender right behind him. So if you throw that ball anywhere else – it's either picked or just a dud. Debo cradles it. We got a first down downfield. See, nobody remembers the good shots. Only, like, Jay, you remember only the bad stuff, right? Most of the guys that hate Jimmy, they get over the good shots like that. But that one shot out of four, oh, we're never going to get over that. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, my God, Rumbo, that ain't a big number, Rumbo. What? It was the That's biggest on the 49ers okay. squad last year. No, you know. You got to remember, Jay, people think defenses around the league are just going to sit there and watch the 49ers throw deep passes. It's not going to happen, Jay. Do you know Patrick Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes, the best example you can get. Mahomes, Mr. I throw everything deep. They picked his butt off for the first five, six weeks, right and left, to the point that uh, the coach said, look, we're going to have to reshape this uh, offensive attack. And they start nibbling, nibbling, nibbling. You can't just bomb the NFL defenses. They'll kick your ass. They will. So, you know, there's a lot of great talents out there playing the secondary. You got to set it up. You got to also have great wide receivers who can gain separation. Or if I put that ball in a certain zone, don't challenge NFL defenses on every throw deep. You will get hurt. And that's what that's the truth. So getting on Jimmy about yeah, that. But- all the time. We're going to find out. Everybody's going to find out this year. <laughs> if you think Shanahan's going to have Trey throwing one one out of three shots going deep downfield, oh, you guys are in for a surprise. That's not going to happen. Yeah, but uh good, good thing is about uh, training camp is that uh, I think, you know, uh, I think uh, Jawan Jennings is going to be uh, Trey's safety blanket. To be honest with you, here's why. Yeah, because we, we're hearing a lot of good things, and uh, he sounds like you know he, he's doing better than IU. I think that's what it <laughs> sounds like. That's what it sounds like, though. But you know, would that be uh, interesting? I don't know. No, no, Jay, you bring up a good nah, point nah, because he ain't be a, one reporter gonna said be a second wide receiver. Though. No, no, no. But the thing is, the other day somebody said, I wish Richard reporter said it. He said it. He said, very strangely, Brandon Ayuk couldn't gain separation from one of our linebackers. I forget which one it was. But he, he, the only reason they could have reported that that way is because it must have been ongoing during the course of that workout. <laughs> I, don't, I want to see who this, this guy is on defense. I'm not worried about Ayuk. I want to see, who is this linebacker that's given Ayuk fits? Good. Yeah. And uh, another thing, I think he is going to be our safety safety blanket. Uh, Jawan Jennings is that. Uh, remember, uh, um, I remember last year with that we played the what's it called the the Cardinals. Um, once we finished that game and once we lost that game, uh, Trey Lance actually said in the press conference he said that he said we missed Jawan Jennings. That's what he said literally. That's what he yeah. said. And uh, I think we had Tra- Travis Benjamin Rombo. Literally the shortest you know. guy in the room, probably. I don't know who, but, you know, that guy was short, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah. And, he's, you know, he, he knows how to play big, like Kyle says, too, you know? Ooh. And the guy has no fear about cutting across. Uh, Jawan Jennings has no fear oh, yeah, about Jawan. racing across the middle of the field. You know, that, that, that takes guts. Him and Debo. Because Debo dares you to stop him coming running across the middle of the field. So, you know, it's going to be yeah. interesting. Ron, but what do you think? Is Debo going to have the same <laughs> year as last year, yes or no? Okay, you know what? I don't want to answer this question because you know what I'm worried about? Okay. I'm going to tell you. The, you know, Jay, here's a, I'm, I'll, I'll just give you an idea, though, what I'm okay. thinking. Because here's the thing, Jay. Because this is too much energy spent on being unhappy. And, and Debo's out there working out, but he's not happy. Okay, I really wish the 49ers learned something from this this year. Stop dragging ass. If you're gonna if you're gonna extend a player, you don't need to wait until September first to, to ex- expend. Give him this damn contract. You know, you, what is the point of waiting this long? You know why we're waiting this long, Rombo? I know Jimmy's uh, money. Jimmy, uh, no, Jimmy's not me. Not no, that. What? It's because uh, we signed a tight end that hasn't performed well, and uh, I think. Our office is worried that people ain't gonna. Perform. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you, what, what tight end are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> the highest paid tight end. Right? Jay, you got a problem with George Kittle? Really? What he hasn't put, he hasn't had the same season as uh, what twenty eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you know, you and Fly Guy. You do you know Fly Guy? Fly Guy's been doing saying the same thing. No, no, not Fly Guy. Uh the other there's another guy that calls it and it gets on George Kittle. And I always have to he we run out of time he talks about George Kittle so long and so badly. Oh the oh anyway. George Kittle, because our offensive line has its issues at times. Poor George gets stuck because he's so good at helping that offensive line. He gets stuck in that assignment a lot. I guess so, but, you know, it would be good if he had, you know, a lot of yardage or whatever the hell. Okay, you need dual tight end sets. Make Charlie Warner come in and do some blocking. This is Kyle's fault to some degree, too, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yes, anyway. so, but you know, we we heard a lot of good things about Trey too, so that's pretty yeah. good, you know. But it, yeah, whatever it is training camp, people are gonna say mm-hmm. that, whatever. But you know, at least he's doing good in training camp. So. And yeah, and that's what I say. You know, I don't want to hear anything bad about him, no matter what anybody says. No, nothing bad. If he's doing well, fine. But don't tell me anything bad because that's gonna scare me. It's like Nick Sudfeld. I'm shipping him out the first chance I get. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could throw that that beautiful spiral rumba, but you know, he doesn't Sudfeld. look good, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's tall. Oh, yeah, anyway. he's tall. I think I think he's slow because he's so tall. Probably, yeah. That's what it is. Uh, maybe this one looks like that too. Jay, let me see a Sunday, okay? Good stuff. Always yeah, fun to talk you know, to you. You have a good day, Rambo. Thanks, Jay. Talk good, to you later. Bye. You too. Hey. Hey, Tony. T- Tony. Tony. Hey, Rombo. Tony, come on in, man. I'm, it's so funny because every now and then I, I enjoy doing this program because I get thrown a curve. Now, I'm talking about guys that are doing good things. And all of a sudden, Pop says, you know, tell me about the guy who bothers you the most in camp. <laughs> Tony, I want to present. Tony, you know what? You're a good guy with that kind of perspective, too. Now, we can talk about Juwan Jennings and, and Glitz and Glimmer. And he's, he's doing a good job for us. I do like hearing about Jake Brindle. Uh, Ibukum, if he could step it up like he did last year, good. But address that, Tony, and tell me uh, after you do that, who is it on this roster? Because we're starting to get into the George Kittle is bothering people, which blows my mind. Uh, what are you thinking? Who's the most annoying player on the roster right now? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious <laughs> stuff, man. Why, I, 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 Tony, I know what Tony's going to say. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> 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 Probably right there, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Tony. Uh, but I, I don't know who the who would be the most annoying. Uh, probably the most annoying player on the team for you would be Nate Sudfeld and Jimmy yeah, G well, yeah. for the rest yeah. of the people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got that exact right. That, Nate Sudfeld, I've had about enough of him. Six something. That guy's a tall man. They they came in and practice. 
and slapped the shot down at the line of scrimmage. And then he got picked off before that. Says, you know, I guys, really, Trey Sermon and Nick's in in in, in Sudfeld. Why? <laughs> I just I'm not in. Whoa, God. So. I mean, you know, we've won the Super Bowl before with it, it before an even snap has come off <laughs> in, a, in a game. The way he's been talking about things the last couple of days. <laughs> True. <sighs> we haven't even seen the preseason game yet. But things seem to be tracking in the right direction. You know what yeah. I mean? We're not hearing anything bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling good about that. But, and uh, as you said, the uh, the O line, Jake Brendel, whatever his name is, that's him. Well, if if you know they're saying he's good, we'll have to take their word for it. I mean, <laughs> that's we're not the ones that have got to worry about it. It's Trey that's got to worry about it. <laughs> Trey says yeah. some good things about him, but you know, he also ended by saying, "Ah, I was, sadly, I won't be able to play with Alex." Uh oh. Now that you mention it, well, Alex is a, is, a, is a Hall of Famer, possibly. I guess that's what he means. It doesn't mean that Jake's not worthy. I hope. I mean, you, you, another thing you you spoke about that interests me a bit was um, the Kermit the Frog <laughs> getting his ass raped first part of the season. Well. Yeah, you know, like we were talking about the other day, you know, once, yeah. once these quarterbacks take off or they're getting chased, the secondary then can position, get, position itself to uh, either, you know, nullify that play or intercept mm. the ball. Yep. So, uh, you know, you, this might come out wrong, Rombo, but that's <laughs> where the quick release... You know, if you've got a quarterback that can stand in a pocket and fire off that ball quickly, mm-hmm. uh, the team, you know, the, the secondary doesn't have time to get in position to to do those things. And uh, Shanahan's play calling uh, with the quick release, I believe, enables a lot of across the middle and, you know, straight up the gut plays. Absolutely. Those timing routes, but, they depend on precision timing. That's why the word timing is being used. You don't have time to dance around and wait. you got to wait for that route, hit the spot. The receiver's yeah. supposed to be there. That's the essence it, of his offense. It's harder for the defender, I'm saying. Like yeah. If you're defending against a quick release, by the time you take off, too late. the ball's already in the hands of, of, of the running back or the w- wide receiver, and they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're making strides. Does it make sense? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. The essence you know, like, of that offense, and that's what you th- when you throw a guy open, people say, oh, Jimmy's always throwing people in danger. No, no, no. Jimmy's throwing that ball where he was told to throw it, where they rehearsed it, and the way it's supposed to be done. You know, it may go high sometimes or something like that, but for the most part, he's throwing it to a spot. That receiver's supposed to get there. This is a, an, a, a synchronized movement that's going on. It has to be done right, or it's a mess. I mean, a real mess. It has to be done right. But when it's done right, the defense... Has no, pa- has no chance. You've got no, they don't have time to react. Whereas if the quarterback's gone off running, they can watch with... He's going to run to one side of the field. He's going to run to either side of... You know, look, to, one, to, one, to the left or to the right. So now they're, they're anticipating... They've got time. They've got seconds now to, to keep an eye on him mm. and watch him and watch him release that watch ball. By the time he uh. releases the ball, they can make a jump play or, you know what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. quick release. Yeah, plays over. And, mate, it's very hard to defend against a quick release. A lot of people very hard. Just, a lot of people just hate that. They want that quarterback running around, making plays. Creating his own shot. This is not the NBA. He needs to do things in sync. That's how you throw a defense off. And that's why they made Trey stand still. Uh, they tried to make him stand still uh, during the times he was on the field. He, he's he's got to focus. He's got to hit the timing. He's got to get that right. Hopefully he's getting well, that down that's now. Why, 
running the the quarterback running for me is not is not a problem. But he can't do it all the time. Yeah, when a play breaks down. You know, mate? Yeah. Case in point, uh, good old Rusty, who we always have a t- hard time <laughs> against, uh, against, all right? He doesn't <laughs> take off every time he gets the ball. No. You know, it, I mean, he takes off at certain, you know, on certain, you know, certain times. Well, usually plays but, are broken so, down. And they do a lot. Yeah. Seattle's got a real bad offensive system anyway. The plays break yeah. down often. Russell Wilson doesn't want to run. He already told people. He's getting old, too old for that. Well, Mahomes too. You know, I mean, if you keep running, 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 they're going to figure you out and you're, you're going to look like a chump. I mean, look at uh, uh, a few years ago, you know, when Lamar Jackson came into the <laughs> Like I'm gonna win a, I'm gonna win a Super Bowl. I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, you're not gonna win shit like that, brother. <laughs> he did, David. Right? Keep your mouth shut and play the game. It got hurt. You'll, you'll first thing you'll do, you'll end up jinxing yourself or oh, <laughs> you know, catch out with an injury. Oh. It, it's it's not as as easy as it seems, is it? You know, like we can stand there and sit there and we'll stand there or whatever couch. We're, uh, Bloody potatoes and and and, and, nice and watch the game any, any way you want. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see how that works out though soon. So, but Tony, we're gonna go, and I can't wait to see you Sunday and see where what else we can dig up here. <laughs> All right, All right bro. Good stuff, shout bro. out to everyone and see you in the next chapter. <laughs> Thanks, fam. Wow. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, mate. And hey, hey, Casey. What's the number? Casey, it's, uh, it's as I always like to bring positives up. We always seem to steer in other different drift directions. <laughs> but I, was, I, was, I was enjoying the X Factor potentials. I was looking at Jawan Jennings. E. Bookham's looking solid. And all of a sudden, we can, we, maybe, Casey, just maybe we can stop worried about the center spot. Jake Brindle may be the answer to our prayers. I like to think that way because coaches are saying good things about him. Maybe. Okay. Well, I haven't heard about him yet. I haven't really been <laughs> following the team the last week. But, yeah. Um, you know, I just I thought Jonathan Goodwin was, was the best center I've seen with the Niners. Um, probably since Newberry, right? So hey, I um, forgot about him. As long he as they, was good. Yeah, Newberry. Yeah, man, fresh out of Antioch, man. And uh, you know, Jonathan Goodwin was so good at downfield blocking. And um, and I'm you not can't sure how Alex get that, offensive linemen. Every now and then, you know, you 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 get guys who do that, uh, but not often. You usually do their thing at the line of scrimmage, a few yards beyond. But as far as racing down the field, no, nah, yeah, I can yeah. see that. Well, and, and he was good at getting away with holding too. <laughs> see, but, uh, that's an art form. Whitworth does that yeah. too over in Los Angeles before he left. Nick Bosa explained how he does it. Even Bosa was impressed. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. I'd love to hear that. Nick says, it's funny yeah. hearing Bosa called Drake a good kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Nick. Like, you, I was like, how long have you been here, Nick? Like, yeah. <laughs> and then, hey, did you see uh, <laughs> the starting linebackers throw out the first pitch tonight at the Giants game? Which one? It wasn't Fred. Uh, they had Aziz, Fred, and Dre out there. Oh! <laughs> and it, it, and, I got to go find that. And it was that, really clear that, that they're all. Yeah, it was pretty clear that they're all linebackers, Rombo. <laughs> they looked pretty big out there, didn't they? Compared to the baseball players? No, I mean, they're. They, oh, they, they're pitching. I, I think. I think. I think Dre was the only one that got it past home plate. So <laughs> <laughs> people don't know if you never throw a baseball all the time and you try to go from the mound to the catcher's mitt, it is yeah, labor. So Man, that ball's going to fly in all different directions. So hats off to MLB pitchers who are out there throwing the ball ninety-seven to one hundred miles an hour and breaking balls. At over 80 miles an hour. How do you throw a breaking pitch over 80 miles? I'm impressed with that. Every time, the first time I heard a guy do that. A breaking pitch? 80 miles an hour? Are you freaking killing me? Because And there's something that can throw bigger, faster than that. God, that's insane. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, I hope, they, uh, I hope the linebacking core does good this year. Um, I thought Fred got pretty burned in coverage like later in the year especially in the red zone yeah he did didn't he but, I, uh, yeah he even said something about it himself 
It's that jinx, though, Casey, and I hate to believe it. These guys get paid, and all of a sudden they can't play. I mean, something yeah. goes wrong for a few minutes until that they can get to them. happen with Fred every time. But Everybody. they had, they had, they still had good stats last year. You know, they run defense. Yeah, they but it wasn't a lot same. of turnovers. Yeah, he didn't look like Fred yeah. Warner the year before, though. Well, and you know, it's tough too because we have such a high standard with Pat Devaro. Yeah, I had put, but I had put Fred you know. uh, with him uh, if I was going to then pick up my three uh, greatest. Yeah, I, I had uh, Bowen Willis and uh, Fred have to be right there. T- can you think of another guy? Yeah, Robo, Jeff Albrecht, man. <laughs> we, was that the guy that used to be able to leap up in the air about 80 feet? That dude, man. I, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> but I always thought Jeff was just a sure tackler in Madden. And, uh, yeah. I met him at the mall one time in, uh, in San Jose. I was really young. I was like, hey, man, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, these, these linebackers, that's a tough job to get any notoriety. Yeah, I was, I was the only one of my friends that recognized the 49ers outside linebacker that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's Jeff Oldbrick. But, you know, we're, we're, we're talking mostly four, four, three, three, uh, three, four. You know, th- there's been outside linebackers. Do we count them? Now, Ahmad Brooks too con- was really good. Oh, Ahmad. <laughs> yeah, That's one of my all-time faves of good OLB. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Big old 55, man. He was underrated, man. Ahmad Brooks was really good. He was. It always, it always yeah. played looking pissed off. I love that about Ahmad. Yeah. Nobody messed yeah. with Ahmad Brooks. You know, that's some guys get run lip and start talking trash to some guys. I never see anybody jump in Ahmad Brooks' face. <laughs> Yeah, it just looked like don't do it. Don't even think about it. And, and you know who else I'm excited about? Uh, talk about playing angry is uh, TDP man. I think that's a that's a whole new piece for the Niners that they think haven't so. had. Think so? I yeah, so. I can't even really remember the last player that reminds me of him. Kind of reminds me of, like Stephen Jackson. Uh, this guy's this guy is this one of the biggest running backs? I'm trying to think of a running back we've had of this size. Yeah, he's got really quick feet. Um, you know, just power running back, good vision. Um, he might take over Eli's uh, Elijah Mitchell spot. Um, but if anything, uh, he'll be a great change of pace. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's what he's going to be, especially for the first few weeks. Yeah. Kyle's still going to run Elijah I, Mitchell. I'm really Kendall Hunter, Rombo. Hunter was he was a smaller frame guy. Great feet. He was with such though. a great change of pace with freight, yeah. you know? Guy, he's, that was I thought he did good with pass blocking and... Really scat back. You know. Yeah. He's a good athlete, too, man. Yeah. And, and again, of course, but those guys always end up getting seriously hurt. They took his knee out. Yeah. He never could come back. Well, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so crazy. It's just now in, in the NFL world, you just got to stay healthy now. Because so many people will be able to take your job because well, everyone's just so good nowadays. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You get hurt, he's going to be out how many weeks? Yeah. Oh, man, that's so, it. So in a perfect world, I'd like to see them keep uh, Elijah Mitchell, uh, TDP, and Jeff Wilson. Yeah, that's my choices. Yeah. Uh, Big Show has good things to say about this this new guy uh, we got running back. Uh, I want to see him more. I'm, I'm, I didn't, I'm not paying any attention to him. I didn't go check his college film, but I want to see what Who's he looks that? like. Oh, uh, forget his remember? name. Hey, let me wait a minute. Tre- Jordan Matt Mason. Okay. Yeah. Under- oh yeah, the, you know Jordan Matthews is on the team again, Rumbo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> him and him and Dante Pettis each and every year, uh, whether they're invited or not, they just show up and and walk in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dante, you're back. We oh, hadn't given man. you a call yet, but listen, we were going to, and uh, of course, yeah, Matthews. You know. <laughs> yeah, the perennial training camper. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's good about God them? If you have to get make a cut, you just go ahead and cut them, and you bring them back in a few minutes. You know, as soon as you, as soon as the air clears. No, I, mean, I think he's. I think he's really good too. It's just there's a lot of good players in the NFL, and it's kind of tough to get a spot in Kyle's system. You got to be really fast. So yeah. And he, he tried to be a tight end last year. Matthews gained a lot of yeah. size, but uh, still couldn't make it. In case we're going to go. Yeah. I, I forgot how late it is, so we can't roll over time. I'm going to tell you what, though. I'll be I'm looking for you Sunday, okay? 
Right on. Hey, Bronco, can I give a shout out? Of course you can. You ready? I just like to say, uh, I'd like to say, shout out to Niner, Niner by Nature. Always <laughs> showing love, man. That, <laughs> and that guy's hilarious, Rumble. That guy cracks me up, man. <laughs> all right, Rumble, have a good night. You guys man. don't pick all of you. He's getting a lot of flack here today. <laughs> okay, case. <laughs> have a Later, good night, fam. <laughs> Yo, Eric. You mean to see you? Eric? What's up, Rumble? Eric, how you doing tonight? Who'd you pick, Rumble? Me or Steven? No, I picked uh, Eric. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, did Steven come in as well? No. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. We'll, st- st- we'll, Steven, you next, I guess. Okay. Eric, we're talking about Jawan Jennings and Kyle Shannon's big, big, big statement. Uh, he probably gains separation out here better than anybody else. And he didn't hesitate. He didn't make any mistake. He didn't backtrack and say, well, what I meant was, is, no, nah, he meant that. Juwan Jennings. I got big plans from this season. <laughs> and then, of course, he booked him saying great things. Uh, but he's, his spotlight's on him. He's looking good in camp so far with the small amount of time we've done. And we got a center. It looks like Jake Brindle's going to be the guy. And by the way, Eric, is there anybody on the team – and? Uh, that stands out in your mind as somebody other than Jimmy Garoppolo uh, that really is of concern to you? Um, well, I mean, the immediate guy for that, it just goes to Trey Sermon. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, There we are. We, we, we agree. I, but, yeah, it's, it's him. And, and uh, concerning, though, uh, and Mike McGlinchey also, we have no idea what he's going to be coming back about after that major injury. Um, but it's, I love what, what the Niners are saying about Jawan Jennings and and um, what Abukum is saying about Jackson. I, I really like that. I like how Bosa said that there's things that he couldn't do as a rookie that wow. that Jackson is doing. Know, that, doesn't that, that is, resonate in your that mind? Is, wow, really? Yeah, that, that's something that's – it's just something you think about. Like it, when he's on the field, it's, we're going to see things that Bosa couldn't do his rookie season. And if – those are the good things, then Drake Jackson and Nick Bosa are going to be really, really good together. Uh, but I, I was watching uh, yesterday's show, and I was, I was listening to, um, to Papa Dragon talk about Kyle Shanahan blowing the Super Bowls. And I completely agree with him. I completely agree that Kyle Shanahan, I don't know what the hell is wrong with him. I don't know why he <laughs> blows that thing. Um, but to me, I, I see it like this. Or you could see it two ways. Number one, I just... It, it's funny to me that the two Super Bowls he lost were against Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. And then the other one he blew was Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> two people that I would say are the face of the NFL. Mm. Now, you could look at it as the NFL is protecting those guys from losing, or you could look at it as those are the reasons we lost. Um, I've, Rob, I've always thought that the NFL has kind of protected those, those four Definitely um, did in our Super Bowl. I, I, Patrick Mahomes and the yeah. flags that were not flying on that offensive line that was so-so, holding down one of the best defensive units in the NFL. I really still struggle with that, but there's nothing to be done about it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always thought that the NFL was kind of weird in that sort of way. And, and to prove it, if, if you look up the, the Madden 2022 20, teaser trailer, they literally have – a baby goat and a goat to represent Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes being on the cover of Madden just shows what the NFL thinks of those two. See. I don't understand why they would ever do that, but yeah. it just shows what the NFL thinks of those two. And I think during a lot of big games, you usually see those guys win. Um, mm-hmm. I uh, personally, me, I, I think the NFL was not going to allow Mahomes to lose that Super Bowl, especially his first one and versus a 50 Jimmy year anniversary. Oh God. Yes. Yeah, uh, there's. I, I, I did not honestly during before the game even started. I just had a feeling that that was going to happen, um, and that's basically what did happen. And it's funny to me too, you know, when when Brady went against the the Seahawks, the Seahawks had the number one defense. They had a ten point lead in the fourth quarter, and it went away. Same thing mm-hmm. that what happened in our Super Bowl. So it, mm-hmm. the similarities are kind of weird. So at and, the same and, time. And, and- and let me think, draw another parallel with that, too. The following year, Mahomes versus Brady, they picked their guy. Mahomes, they, the defense is just all over him. Their flags are not – the flags are flying on Kansas City. There was more laundry on that field than there was – I mean, it was just – the, the, the field was yellow with flags. 
They threw every penalty they could against the Chiefs, but no, not when we played them. No, they're not doing anything wrong. Just over a year's time, they just got bad. You lying sons of God, I was mad. Oh, yeah, so you're it, right. It, to me, I've, I've, always, I've always seen it like if you have a quarterback that is a money maker for the NFL, yep. you're typically going to win a lot of big games. Yeah. I've always seen it like that. That's why I see guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, guys like that Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. Once they get to that point where they're in the Super Bowl, I don't see them losing. That's why I, I, that's why I see the NFC so weak because the, I think the only good quarterbacks, or obviously Trey Lance could be a part of that group mm-hmm. eventually. But in the, in, the AFC, in the NFC, there's Stafford, Rodgers, and that's pretty yeah. much it who I think could yeah. win the Super Bowl and get those calls during the Super Bowl because we all know if you have the quarterback, you're going to get calls. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I just that's I guess my point with with the Papa Dragon thing is I think it was such bad luck that those two Super Bowls that Kyle Shanahan was in was against those four. You know, Bill <laughs> Belichick, <laughs> obviously everybody knows, Tom Brady. best coach ever. Patrick, Moore. and then Andy Reid. I mean, look at the way Andy Reid is looked at now. He's looked at probably the best coach in football. Yeah. Same with Mahomes, best quarterback in football. Yeah, it, I, it's just to me, it's kind of kind of weird, Ironic. and it's sad that those are the. It's yeah, it's sad that those are the, the four guys he had to go against in those Super Bowls. But either way, he did blow them. It you know, as day as day, you know, so that you know that kind of sucks. But hopefully, hopefully, I to me personally, Rumble, if the Niners ever get back to the Super Bowl, I'm hoping that it's when Lance has established himself as a top ten quarterback that you know people want to see win. Hopefully, it ends up like that because. If if he goes if he ends up going against like Josh Allen, yeah, let me rookie, ask you. Make a scenario. You know what? Who wins the AFC uh, championship? It's it's. I think it's going to be the Bills. I I really think it's going to be. And it, it's so funny to me. I feel like the NFL has been trying to make this this new rivalry between between Mahomes and some other quarterback. You Josh know how Allen. Brady had something with with Manning. Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah. I really think the rivalry. Those are, those are is, scenarios and dramas and that they can build on. Exactly. Yeah. At first, I thought it was going to be Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson, but I don't think Lamar Jackson is good enough. I think he's just a, you know, the next Russell Wilson, always a playmaker, always that type of guy, but he's never really gonna gonna take that team far. Um. I but yeah, I, it's it's sad to see that those those scenarios kind of do play out. They do. Even if, you know, the purists, if you're a real football purist like a lot of us are, you start to see things that you don't really appreciate, and then you start to speculate in that direction that you're going right now. So if Josh Allen versus Trey Lance in the Super Bowl, you may be on to something because Josh Allen has paid his dues. That little fiasco last year between him and Patrick Mahomes, and they changed the legislation moved toward changing that rule. You know, now you can't just win like that because Mahomes and, and Allen are going back and forth that whole game, right? Nobody's playing any defense on either side. Yeah. Or they're trying, but they're getting killed. And at the end, who had the ball last won. There is something wrong with that. I, I don't feel like I want to see the game getting changed all the time, but that is something that might need changing. Yeah. And, um, you know, one more thing. You know, hey, big show, I'm going to just say this. Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to start for the 49ers. I've noticed this with Big Show a lot. He, he tends to disagree with the fans a lot. I don't know why. I, I, I remember, you know, obviously he wanted Mac Jones in the, in, in the draft. Yeah. And then and then while every fan wanted Christian Watson late in the first or early second, which is where he went, he was saying, no, Christian Watson's a third-round talent. He's not that good. Hmm. And then now – he wants Jimmy Garoppolo to start, or he thinks Jimmy Garoppolo is going to start. Well, it, 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 I, Jimmy still owns the team. Yeah, so no, um, no. you know it, 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 it's good though. It, we we sh- we don't we're never all going to agree on things anyway. Show takes a different avenue altogether than both left and right. <laughs> so I show is <laughs> I find him entirely amusing. <laughs> but anyway, we got to go though, fam, because we're over time now. Let me let me uh, uh, Eric. Let me see a Sunday if you got time. All right, Robert. I'll catch you later. <laughs> All right, fam. Have a great night. And Steven. What's up, Rambo? Steven, man, we're, we're, we're looking at some of the things that are taking shape already in camp. Uh, 
Kyle Shanahan saying what he said. You know, these are the things that stick out in our minds. You hear about uh, the things that Nick Bosa says, yeah, well, he's doing things uh, in his rookie year already that I could never do. What? Nick, yeah. you're Nick Bosa. How are you going to say that? And he got Kyle Shanahan saying things like, Jawan Kinlaw may gain separation out here better than any other receiver on this team, and it just knocks you back. What? <laughs> what? Kyle, you, really? You know? And now we got Jake Brindle. Uh, it seems like he is the heir apparent. We don't have to worry about uh, Daniel Brunskill being the center for this team this year, which is a good thing. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Stephen, go ahead. Your input. And by the way, if you if you if you did it all yeah, that, but, if you have a, a, a person on this team that bothers you, uh, I kind of like that what uh, Pop brought up tonight. And who, who on this team bothers you the most? <laughs> but go ahead. You know who bothers me? Uh, <laughs> mm, mm, uh, honestly, yeah, I gotta say Debo. I gotta say Debo. After that whole bullshit about him, like, you know, just being being a bitch, honestly, being a bitch. Oh, I'm going to take all my social media. I'm going to do this and that. You know, I'm going to go here and go there and pretend like I'm not part of the team. But, you know, I can't get traded anywhere else because nobody fucking wants me because I don't want to do the one thing that made me famous that got me the most money. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, not cool with that. I get, you know, you want your bread and you want your paycheck. And, you know, you got a family to feed at the end of the day. But if you're going to bitch about what you're playing... And he did, he's the only guy that went right. that to that extent. Just really got yeah. loud and noisy. I mean, look at, here, here's the thing. Look at Nick Bosa. Look at Nick Bosa. He hasn't even gotten re-signed yet. And he has kept his mouth shut the entire fucking time. And he when is do focused ask him, on earning nice that paycheck answer. rather than being a prima donna. Yeah. He says, my agent handles that. I'm, uh, I'm working on yeah. football. Yeah. And as you should be. Yeah. So it, there, there's a certain line of, you know, not respect, not dignity, but, like, just doing your job right, I guess you could say. And just being like, you know, hey, if I want that big paycheck, I got to earn it again. Because if you really think about it, Debo only had that one breakout season. Granted, I mean, we, they used him as a running back and as a wide receiver, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff he had to, he has to prove to get that extra earning pay stretch that, you know, for some odd reason, Christian Kirk got, but, you know, Cooper Cup got too. Cooper Cup deserved it. Cooper Cup was routing people. He routed the fuck out of our defense. Oh, I, and like you he's know, never he done it. before. And this year was the yeah. one. God dang it. Uh. And so I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, you know, you got to play like them in order to get that uh, uh, that kind of money. But the one person who I'm kind of happy to hear is uh, uh, Brendel. You know, that's something that is kind of nice because, you know, we all kind of looked down on Brendel for a minute, like, oh, damn, he's going to replace Alex back at the center? I don't know about that. And then, uh, you know, it's just there are certain players that I'm also kind of disappointed in. Mm-hmm. I ain't disappointed in Nate Sutfeld. I'm disappointed that we kept Nate Sutfeld, yeah. But I'm not disappointed in Nate Sutfeld because I knew when we signed him last year as a backup, it was just, you know, like a, a, a mercy signing. Like, oh, we got nobody. Granted, Rosen wasn't that much better, but at least he had a cannon. And at least when he overthrew somebody, it's because he had too much power, not because he was stupid. You know. <laughs> and then another person who I keep hearing is kind of a downer is uh, Trey Sermon. God damn. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Trace, everybody's yeah, I mean, I favorite feel like guy. Him getting, <laughs> he's, he's our new – he's our new Dante Pettis and Jordan Matthews. Oh, Here's the God. thing. I'll say this. At least Jordan Matthews tried. Dante Pettis didn't try. Let's be real. Let's let's stop. Let's cut the bullshit. Dante Pettis didn't try. Man was made out of glass. You can Ooh, see his face. Good, like a he receiver. got Stephen. You know what? He got hurt, fun. and uh, he didn't realize the pain was so uh, intense in the NFL. When he was laying on the field, stretched out that first time, he bounced back to some degree. The second time he stretched him out, Dante says, "You know what? I may have picked the wrong thing to do with my life." And you can sort of see that in him. I see. I see Dante pull up on a he's route like, a couple damn, of times. I should have stayed in college. You know, <laughs> Dante pulled up on a yeah, couple of routes like, because he saw the collision coming. Oh, you cannot be a wide receiver if you ain't got no guts, no glory at that job, Dante. You know that too. You got to run that route. Yep, you got to go all in or none. Uh, it's either all or bust with wide receiver. And uh, uh, man. Ah, I hear everyone's picking on Niner by nature today. That's, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. Uh, I mean, well. I'll be real with you. 
he to some degree manage is kind of annoying i'm not gonna lie to you he's like a he's like the gold rush cheerleader but like times 10 <laughs> to be, to be well, honest well, well ain't nothing pa- wrong with it it's just like yo dial it back you know? well you know we, he's passionate about Trey, that's that's okay. I, I don't know yeah. if he should be under such but attack. But there's a certain degree, you know? <laughs> you know? Although, a certain I, degree I'd like to shout out to those guys. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but Jimmy G's healthy. Dies middle of the pack. You, you know, professionals and analysts who look at these things objectively put him in the middle of the pack. 32, get out of here with that. <laughs> God. Well, this is the one thing about, you know what's going on? Stephen, here's the thing. Some of the love for Trey is out of a lot of so a lot of that hate for Jimmy is transferred to love for hate or love for Jimmy or Trey. So therefore, now you're getting the arguments. I'm seeing more than I saw at the last time. Now I'm seeing arguments about Trey on social media that I didn't see. So once you start to hype a guy, that's when uh, the arguments start. I think that's what we're starting to see now. I, I think, think Trey needs a chance. I think you just described the bandwagoner. I, I really think you just described what a bandwagoner is. <laughs> well, to some degree, uh, the Hawks yeah, fans are starting. Like, to, the oh, Hawks the fans are starting to dwindle. <laughs> man, man, that was uh, that was quick lived, wasn't it? Yeah. And then I do got okay. So I also heard something too about how uh, what was it? Lamar Jackson was equivalent to or going to be an equivalent to Russell Wilson. Don't disrespect <laughs> Russell Wilson like that. No, don't do that. Because Lamar Jackson can't throw it worth a damn. He's fast, I, yeah. Uh, he's Russ, got 50 hips, yeah. Steven, that's so, so Russell well put. Russell Wilson, and I hate to admit it, any Hawks fans catch me saying this, but Russell Wilson's deep ball could be one of the best, at least top three in NFL history. That shot of his downfield, that big rainbow arc that he can pinpoint like a smart missile into a hands. Oh, I've seen that go over the right shoulder. Of wide receivers, 50, 60 yards deep. You talk about a guy that can throw a deep pass? This guy. I've not seen anybody do it like Russell Wilson. Damn it, I hate to say that, but it's true. <laughs> it's true, Rumble. Oh, He's God. one of the few mobile QBs that makes a shitty wide receiver look good, and I'm talking about decaf. I know, right? Oh, you know, man. it. I mean, Tyler Lockett, I can't wait to see how Tyler Lockett handles, uh, what's his name, Drew Love? <laughs> so I, I can't wait to see how that works out. <laughs> okay, Steve, we got to go. I tell you what, I'm going to be looking for you Sunday if you got time. All right, Rambo, I'll see you Sunday. All right. All right, Steven. Sean, I don't no care. I'm, I'm going by what the experts say, not the haters. The big difference. Hey, hey, Brian. To all the teams in the NFC West, Bang, bang, not a game. The law says this. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> What's uh, up, Rombo? Well, you know, we're, 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 I'm, I'm getting a load. If these penetrating statements keep coming out. We had Nick Bosa just say the other day, yeah, Drake, he's a, he's a good kid. He does some things I couldn't do as a rookie. What? And then you got today, <laughs> or yeah, the other day, Kyle says, yeah, Juwan Jennings probably gained separation on this team better than any other wide receiver. Mm. What? Mm. What? Kyle, you mean that? He were better. Better he than? He were better. Yes. You know what? It, I thought Debo. Well, you know what? I, I, Debo is. Well, you know what? Debo steams by people so fast. Him and Jimmy had a thing where. The receiver, the defender didn't know where the ball, what <laughs> Debo or the ball was going. That was their secret. Ayuk mm-hmm. just runs mm-hmm. beautiful. If 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 Jawan can run a route better than Ayuk, that route he ran out against Diggs, one of the best defenders in the league. I like st- wow. Diggs was just totally confused. Jimmy missed. I him. tell you what, Rumble. I tell you what, Rumble. They they sleeping on Jawan Jennings now. They, they better Jennings wake up. Mess around and mess up. Jenny's going to mess up the budget. Now you <laughs> you sitting there worrying about Debo. Now you got to worry. Now Juwan wants the bag. <laughs> Juwan, is hon- Juwan is He is hungry. He is hungry. He ready to eat. He, when you're picked number seven in the draft, 
Was he was he a seventh round, sixth round, seventh yeah. round? Yeah. And when you seven, pick that late in the round. draft, you come into the NFL with a chip on your shoulder. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you know, Kenny Powers. I'm sorry, well, he, but you guys ain't no experts either. Can you, the, the 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 thing about Garoppolo being the worst quarterback in the NFL? See what I'm saying? See how yeah. this is why I can't respect those kind of opinions. That's just ridiculous. But go, go ahead. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Remember uh, it, down the stretch, you know, during the late games and stuff, especially one game in the uh, when we played against the Rams that last game, we needed to get in. You know, Juwan made a nice kick. He made a touchdown. I think he got he got like a. He got like a touchdown. Mm-hmm. He had a key. He made some key catches during the stretch. He did that you a know. lot during the course of the year. John Jennings became. Remember, we were talking about Kendrick Bourne. Oh man, what are we gonna do about Clutch yeah. Bourne? He Kendrick may drop the ball a few times, but he's always gonna make yeah. that absolutely. You had to have it first down or even TDs, so he could do that ridiculous dance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, oh mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. yeah. Who? So, you know. Yes, um, sir. He's going to be something this year. Like I said, but like I said, hey, Rombo on the other side of the ball, defensively, hey, ain't no need to worry. I think we stacked, we stacked over there. Even with the secondary improvement. I think we, that front seven is stacked. Is, is stacked. We got the best linebacker like, group. We may have the best yeah, pass, yeah. Front, pass rushing front. Yeah. And the secondary is looking like you may get 15, you may get 17, 18 points. But as far as getting yeah. way over 20 and anybody talking about getting 30 points against a 49ers defense, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, Rumble. okay, so it's, it's June. So where, are we, where do we stand with D4? Is he on the roster or is he not on the roster? <laughs> You know, I'd love to do, since you asked that question, Brian, I'd love to call and hear some comments from D. Ford. Uh, what would he say? Because D. Ford, I don't know what they're doing. The they're not going to trade D. him. No one's going to give you anything for D. Ford. D. He's D. not going to be able to play. Hey, D. Ford, D. Ford ain't been doing nothing but getting paid. He might, have, <laughs> he might be getting paid going out the door. Three years. <laughs> well, hey, we got him in 2019, right? Three years. Yeah. Played maybe 11 to 12 games in three years. And we might have six sacks. I, 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 we might, maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Yeah. Well, I think he had eight that year. He did play a few minutes. Seven, six, seven, yeah. eight, somewhere. A, a few minutes. I think he picked up a couple more along the way. So you're right. He may have 10 sacks in three years. Maybe. Yeah, we bet. We better find out who his agent is. He, that man got eight. He got guaranteed all the way through. You, you know, and coming see if you in can work. and going out. He's oh. restructured a couple of times. My you neck, know, we, my neck, my back, my neck, and my back. Because be like, okay. <laughs> well, I was mentioning players that, that, that are most disturbing. Yeah, D might. Paid. Yeah, That's D might be agent. that guy. So you I'm thinking he, like, okay, it's June now. We're, we're, I was like, is, is he is he still on the roster? Do we have to cut him? Can we cut him now? Or well, see, we that's have to wait that Brian. It's just like you said, <laughs> the agent fixed it. So if you do this to D, he'll pick up X amount of dollars. If you do this, then D still has to be compensated in this fashion. If you take number three. That means he gets his full guarantee. You know, the, the, the 49ers signed this, and they don't use it. But we hadn't drafted Nick Bosa yet. The 49ers were desperate for an edge rusher that year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, well but any, any man, any man let them, let uh, the Ford agent get them many guarantees. <laughs> Coming in, going through, and going out, that's their fault. That's their that's, 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 that's fault. Yeah. Man, so, you know. i tell you what, we sure need, hey, we, man, I'll tell you what, we sure need the uh, the Rams. We need the Rams bookmaker who who, who, who keeping their books, who, who's managing their, their salary cap because, my God. And, and, you, and you got 49er fans out there defending how they go about doing their business. I get – Reprimanded every time I go on Twitch, uh, Twitter, 
every time I say, you know, I, I, somebody help me out with the math, and somebody comes in immediately helps you with the math. I said, you know what? I'll, yeah. Okay, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I got nothing more to say about this. But you know what? I really wish, like you're saying, I wish we could get the 49ers to hire that guy if the Rams ever let him go, where it was manipulating the books like that. That's amazing. I mean, if you just look at that, just look at that. They had a hell of an off season. You know, guys, most of the guys got three year, three year deals. Wagner got a five, Wagner was a five year deal. <laughs> And he older than everybody on there. He older than everybody. I'm like, how the hell? Damn. How he get a five year deal? He might yeah. not even see that contract. And it was it? Well, you know, only so much is going to be guaranteed. But you mean, not, it wasn't even tiny money. The Rams just boldly said, "Yeah, ten years. Yeah, ten years, and you give him a five year deal. He's not going. He's not going. Uh, they probably, they probably have an option after just after like two. Just, just like but, uh, um, the Bills linebacker. Who, uh, who they? Uh, God dog it. Who's the? Um, Von Miller. When yeah. they signed Von Miller, they know Von Miller's not going to. They, they gave him a six year deal. Yeah, they know Von Miller ain't going to see it all that contract. <laughs> Brad, we got we to gotta go, though. These are subjects that are always going to bother 49 fans because we, we honestly feel like our guys are kind of honest up there in Santa Clara. So yeah. we, think, we don't take no. Anyway. All right, Brad. I mean, I'll see you back Sunday looking for you. Rombo, shout out to you, man. Shout out Thanks, to man. production and shout out to the Faithful. <laughs> Always be faithful, faithful. And with that, the law is definitely out there. <laughs> Appreciate you, fam. <laughs> Looking for you Sunday. There he goes. All right, Rumble. See you Sunday, man. All right. And, All right. Well, it's everybody's favorite guy. Well, it's the big show. Uh, it's a big show on tonight. <laughs> show steps into the ring. Looks around, throws that hand up in the air, gets that yell. <laughs> Show! Everyone in scrambles like cockroaches leaving the ring like little babies. <laughs> well, so um, said, said some things that the people are pushing back on. Go ahead. It's, the mic is yours. I'll just sit back here and monitor the situation. <laughs> First of all, yeah. I'm extremely shocked to hear Eric shocked that I disagree with the fans. Rombo, how long have I been... Is it, let me ask you a question, Rombo. Is it fun to agree all the time? Hell no. You know I know. I, I rarely do. I mean, I've been down through battles through the year that are ridiculous, but I came out right most of the time. Same here, Rombo. Believe it or not, I came out right most of the time. Um, with, and people will never let go of 2019, but let it go. Huh? Yeah. You and I battled back and forth for months mm. about... And I, I loved Josh Allen because he reminded me a lot of Alan Smith. Yeah. And that's that, that's who I fought for. And I ended up losing. So, mm -hmm. um, anyways, but uh, I'm extremely glad to hear Drake Jackson is doing well in camp because D Ford's been all but a disappointment on this team, and we have yet to find a um, a reliable replacement for him. And that's exactly so, what we're hoping for and, and so reflect and i know you heard jack now when he comes back give me some ammunition now, i told jack that drake was under uh the tutelage of a bunch of idiots trying to pose as coaches uh he, he is from the pac-12 which is uh you know a, a, a little frightening he has i don't know if jack there. remembers or not but <laughs> we didn't have chris Kasurik when we had uh, don't quote me on this but did we have chris Kasurik when we had Selected Solomon Thomas twenty. Not when we selected him. Twenty seventeen. I think no, he had one Eric. season with Chris, though, right? One season. But he was exactly out. there. You go. Yeah. Yeah. So there's your ammunition right there. Chris Kasurik will turn to Jerry Jackson. And I also and show. I want to add to that though. Quick. Remember, show he What's came that? into a lineup where Eric Armstead was already going to put him under his thumb, and he did. I told mm -hmm. people that night when they were arguing about we need Solomon Thomas because Eric Armstead ain't, ain't this and that. I said, you know, you guys, why is Eric Armstead not? I, he's not going to Solomon Thomas is going to beat out Eric Armstead, and he didn't. <laughs> you know, so no. you know, it just God. Anyway, and go ahead. Um, Drake Jackson, Drake Jackson's you no know, slouch. He's not Solomon. He's not sloppy Solomon. No. The reason why we selected Solomon Thomas, which was the biggest freaking mistake <laughs> in the history of this franchise, we should have selected a quarterback back in 2017, and we wouldn't be arguing about quarterbacks. 
Or if you're gonna get, if you're gonna go to Stanford, get get MC. I mean, you know, I exactly. He would have fit Pyle Shanahan's offense perfectly. Oh God! Whew. And it was too late. Uh, yeah, and that's neither here nor here nor here nor there. Yeah. But um, and as far as the people that disappoint me so far that are currently in camp are Mike McGlinchey and Daniel Brunskill. God help us if they <laughs> if Daniel Brunskill wants that starting right guard job, which I don't think he wants. And I hope he doesn't do. I hope Jason Poe, who has a bigger chip on his shoulder, um, than Daniel Brunskill does. And I hope Jason Poe we beat him out at that starting right position on the right guard on the right guard spot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I have one more bone to pick with really Toronto. Athletic. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Wilson Jr., really? The dude can't even make it past one quarter. <laughs> so he is, you're right, he is fragile. You don't, So my problem is be fragile. there are so many good football players. So is Michael Hasty. Yes, I, I put him on the practice squad, though. But so so many good players back on the can't squad. stay on the, on the field. Too much money, number one, and they can't stay on the field, number two. And that's why I have Jordan Mason who people are sleeping on um, being uh, Jermichael Hasty for that spot. <laughs> the undrafted rate free the UDFA that we have from Georgia Tech. <laughs> you, Go watch his highlights. Watch no, his I, I've got no, I believe you. I, all you know, so all Hasty has to do is play, break. and Jordan will be right in. No problem, because he's going to get hurt. Body slams people. He breaks tackles. He, um, he, catches really, well, he catches balls in the backfield really well as a receiver. And he blocks. So those are huge qualities to have in a running back that Kyle Shanahan likes. Hey, how big is Jordan? Um, I have to go back and look at his stats and everything. I don't know. No, I mean, I mean, is he a slight Bill guy or anything? Because those guys tend to – Kyle just goes to them like uh, tissue. You know? He's not Travis – he's not He's not Davis or Travis – or what's it? Travis Davis built. He's a little bit smaller and quicker. Oh, oh, oh Terion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he doesn't, uh, he's, mus- he's built, muscular, he's muscularly built. Strong. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, strong, so he's not, he's not fragile like Wilson is. Man, I don't even know how you work out to be a running back in the NFL anymore, man. These guys, they, get, they need to remain quick, so you can't get too bulky. You need to be, you need some bulk to, to, to help you. You know, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's a scary position. That's why they can't get paid anymore. You, 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 there's their longevity is just questionable. As soon as they get on the team, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I have. That's why I named my top four as Elijah Mitchell, Travis, Travis Davis, or whatever the L F his name is. TDP. Sure. No, I know a lot of people are shitting on him right now, but <laughs> he trimmed his spot. He he was a little out of shape. That's why they sat him for a year to get mm-hmm. in football shape. So he's mm-hmm. bulking up and mm-hmm. getting slim and trim and everything like that, ready for football. And I have him as the, the number three and number four Jordan Mason, that UTFA out of Georgia Tech that I keep bringing up. Mm-hmm. Sure. And remember, I was the one. I was the only one. I was the first one to rave about Juwan Jennings over Jalen Hurd while everyone was still hoping for Jalen Hurd to make a turn last year. And yep. lo and behold, I do remember that. Sure. I do remember that. And, and sure enough, that's the case coming to fruition. So before we run out of time, though, I'd love to get your opinion on some of the things that are being said. It's starting to pick up momentum that George Kittle is on some people's on, on top of some pe- people's list of, of annoyances. Um, only because he likes Jimmy Garoppolo over Trey Lance. That's the only reason why. <laughs> George hasn't quite my, my said job. that, and he wants to put on record that he doesn't have any preference. It's just anybody that throws him the ball. <laughs> we don't have preferences. Come on. It's I the mean, guy who made him the highest paid tight end in the league. It's yeah. the guy who made him a time pro bowler. It's the guy who took us to two Super Bowls, two NFC championship games. You, you know, anytime you get a shirt with, with Jimmy Garoppolo. He's the worst quarterback in the NFL who thinks yeah. he can't throw the deep ball, who thinks he can't do this, who can't do that. And, not, and what's funny Every time they say that shit, Kyle Shanahan shows the opposite. Like, uh, what are you guys talking about? He can do everything the things you guys can't see he can't do. I see him every day. Uh, and he did say that. I do remember that in a press conference uh, a while back. You know, yeah. A lot of people don't understand then, when the game's Bravo being team, played, strategies take precedence over the highlight throw. 
You know, it, it, it's yeah. got to be done a certain way, and people don't understand that. They think, well, he can't do it. Oh, God, he can do whatever the coach tells him to do, or else he wouldn't be out there. So, you know. Get out of here. <laughs> it's never going to end. We're going to find out this year, though, Show. Anyway, show. I'm thinking, how about Sunday, right. Show? Well, Come on back. Gonna, always looking for you. A lot of parts are going to be broken week one, so <laughs> there. there you go. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, Joe. Oh, God. Uh, and, and Tony, would you let herself get in here? Bravo, what's happening? Come on. Tony, you know, I, I, I haven't seen your fun guys tonight. Uh, the, the man from Chicago nor Detroit has been here tonight. Uh, have they been here? The, the Detroit guy has, and I – had a few choice words for him. Then, you know, tonight is laundry night at my house, so I left. Laundry. I hope we didn't didn't scare Michael. I, we had a we had a, a lot of rhetoric about the uh, the opening game of every season. Somebody always comes over and represents uh, in this chat and, and lets us know that. Uh, listen, if you guys think you're going to steamroll my team, think again. <laughs> <laughs> like with Don Burr. Don Burr may be the most famous of them all, though. But, yeah, every year. Hey, Mike, you can come back, man. It's all fun. It, 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 you know, the chat, you can handle that. <laughs> yeah, we all mix it up. It's all in good fun. But, yeah, he wasn't in tonight. The Chicago sports Mike, he wasn't in yeah. tonight. I had not seen um, Ready to Go, which I'm happy. I'm really happy about. He's got to be busy. His mom made him go to bed tonight probably early. As you know. Yeah. <laughs> Guy has no idea. He has no history. If you got no historical perspective in the NFL, you shouldn't get on chats and expose that. That's oh, that's just some of the things he said about certain historical players. It's just beyond belief. Yeah, yeah, he should be running his mouth, and that's what he does. Man. Anyway, that's what tonight, he does. Tonight we're talking about X factors. And Tony, who's, who's looking like the X Factor for you guys uh, this year? That guy that, you know, you expect certain things from certain players, but who's that guy that's going to rise up and, and shock people and, and start determining games? Um, is it a rookie or rookie it be, or it doesn't matter? It could be anybody that hasn't been uh, in that role. Jawan Jennings is playing behind Ayuk and Debo, right? So he was always considered that third wide receiver. Now the way Kyle Shanahan's talking about him, you may see him incorporate a little bit more this year. And, you know, between Kyle and Ayuk, <laughs> Kyle seems to be, look, you know, I expect a lot from you. And if you're going to give me 70%, 80% or something like that, I'll sit your ass down. I have a feeling that at the beginning of the year when Ayuk was – not yet ready to play, or whatever that was, in Kyle's eyes, uh, that may have been that conversation. So, J- Jawan so Jennings. You know, I've been liking Jawan Jennings since y'all drafted him. You know? I like Tennessee receivers. Yeah, I like that kid. <laughs> I know. He's, I he's better than even I thought. That, some of the stuff yeah. he did last year yeah. surprised me. I knew he was good, but as good as he was, whoa, look at that. He is standing there all by himself. And then I thought about maybe some of the pressures being taken away from him because they're worried about Debo and IU. But some of those things he did on his own. Yep, and I remember in the, in the last game of the season, when y'all beat the Rams on the, that was a halfback option. Yeah. When y'all threw him a touchdown pass. Man. He beat Jalen Ramsey. Yes. And Jalen Ramsey looking – Looking back at his other secondary mates, I'm like, that's all you. That's all he does. That's all he does. First thing he does is look around for somebody to blame. Oh, yeah, and that dude. slap in front of everybody. A na- I think that, that, that ball game was nasty televised, too. What's that kid's name, yep. that new safety? Slapped him like he was his uh-uh. son. God. For, for the Rams? Yeah. Taylor Rapp? Yeah, just slap T rap. Yep. Wham! Ooh! Is there any bigger disrespect for a man than that? You slapped him. Yeah, you, don't, you don't do that to your teammates. You don't do that wow. to your teammates at all. But, Rambo, I got a couple of X Factors. I, I like, uh, I like uh, Arnold Ida Bouquet, our first second round pick out of Penn State, mm-hmm. uh, outside linebacker. But I also like our, our third round pick. Um, these are rookies, by the way. D'Angelo mm-hmm. Malone, who had two and a half sacks in the senior bowl. And mm-hmm. I love his motor. 
All out of Western right. Kentucky. All right. He's got enough juice that you can think he, he could be that determining guy, huh? Yes, sir. He'll be on the rotation. He won't be starting. Mm-hmm. But at, either Bouquet will, but Malone won't. But that's because we're so deep because we got Lorenzo Carter and uh, Alvin DeJ, uh Guna Ye out of Notre Dame that we drafted last year. Our two mm-hmm. starting outside linebacker. Falcons are a young team. We're a young team. Yeah. You know I like Tyler Argyers, the running back from BYU, I keep telling you about. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah you're high on him. I've heard, I've heard you mention him before. I think that running back from LSU that y'all drafted is going to ball. He, him, him and Elijah Mitchell are going to feed off each other, Rambo. You know? Remember, Elijah Mitchell's from Louisiana Lafayette. Louisiana oh, boys. man, I forgot about that. They sit sitting in the locker room talking about gumbo and jambalaya. Yep. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. LSU and, and Louisiana Lafayette boys. You know how I feel about oh. SEC schools. I'm telling you right now. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Jack is, is, is being hard on my boy Drake, but he's somewhat right about Pac-12 football versus the SEC and some other conferences as well. Uh, when kids grow up now, they don't want to go to uh, uh, yes, the Pac-12. They want to get into SEC football. Can you imagine? Mom, you, you, you're, you're in junior high school or something, high school. Yeah, I'm trying to get into Bama. <laughs> ben, you ain't going to get into no Bama. You better try to get to what, what school? You better try to get to, to bring them young if you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, you know, people. Yeah, if, you go to, if you go to Bama, you're not going to play right off. Anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah, but you're but you're, I, under, um, you're under the spotlight though. You got a good chance by the pros because yeah. the pros are watching Bama, LSU, uh, Georgia Tech. You know, some of those schools are just getting watched. You know, but but so do the so do the Washingtons and the UCLA and the Cal's because our uh, that's true. Out of Cal. That's true. Uh, they David still Hoffman, are. Man, he is going all out. They still got tradition. That's true. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying. And, uh, was the last time Stanford or was the last time Cal? Well, you know what? They're not that long getting people out of those schools. You know, I yeah, guess we drafted uh, Taylor Hawkins in uh, 2020 in the fourth round. He developed and then he, he played like 40 percent of the snaps last year. Now he's going to be the starter. I yeah. love the way he hit. Uh-huh. He had five interceptions last year and only played half a year. It's all about the level of competition. Now, if you come in and stand the heat in the NFL, and this is why people always worry about the Pac-12 and, and products come out of there. Can they deal with some of the kids that are coming out of the SEC, coming to the NFL? They're going to get wiped out. But you know what? Give them a shot. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop booing against our conference. Well, I love the Pac-12, uh, Pac-12 conference. If you notice, we ain't said about the Rambo. I call, I don't even want to say it. I call the Big Ten conference. I call the Ten Cup conference, like the movie Ten Cup. Yeah. With uh, Kevin Costner. <laughs> I, I don't like yeah. the but I, but I love Wisconsin players. Offensive linemen. The good, the good, those are good programs. That's, that's the thing. No matter who they got, they're good yes. programs. Yes. Tony, we're, yes. Tony, we're going to have to go. But I'm about to look for you Sunday, though. Yes, and uh, Rombo, Trey Lance is going to ball for y'all. Yeah, I, I can't uh, wait to see him play. I'm, 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 I'm looking so forward to that. I'll be so delighted. I will be so delighted because we've got to keep winning. I do not want to have to take a slide he's got back. Help the talent around. He's got all that talent around him. Y'all yeah. just got to figure out y'all's center situation. Mm-hmm. And how to do it. Look at the Jake Brindle. Looks like he might be okay. We'll see. Yes, sir. All right, Tony. I'll see you Sunday, sir. Looking forward Folks, to it. Folks, hit the likes. Hit the likes. Hit the likes. Hit the likes. There's 72 of us that hit the likes and 129 and people in the chat. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later. Thanks, Tony. Looking forward to it. All right. And we breeze on over here to Bethel, who never closes that door for me anymore. I love that. <laughs> Bethel! Bethel. Bethel. Uh, Bethel might be tied up. All right. Hey, Rowan. Rowan, come on in, Rowan. What's up, Rowan? How are you doing? Ah, Rowan, man, we're just looking at things to talk about with the 49ers. And uh, as I said, those those resonating uh, statements made by both Nick Bosa and Kyle Shanahan and got people like backing up. Whoa, what did you say? I mean, Nick's saying about, uh, you know, Drake. He, well, he can do things that I couldn't do when I was a rookie. And then Kyle comes out and says, 
you know, yeah, he maybe he he gets best. He's got to be the best at our wide receiver group of ga- gain and separation. What? Really? So you know, and then you got Jake Brindle and and Ron. I don't. You probably because knowing you, you with your insights, you probably figured that the center position wasn't going to be that big of a deal. You probably knew about Jake Brindle the whole time, didn't you? But what are your th- what are your th- thoughts? Rohan, did we lose Rohan? There we go. Uh, I, yeah, I, I okay. got muted there, but <clears throat> no. Right. Uh, you talked about Jake Brendel, and yeah, I mean, I don't want to like toot my own horn in a way, but starting about last week, midweek, uh, and before that a little bit, since essentially OTAs, we saw Jake Brendel was a starter, right? We saw that okay. he was the first team guy, <clears throat> and then over the last couple of weeks, have started to piece the connection a little more. Not only is Jake Brendel the first team guy in OTAs, I didn't think of it as as big of a deal, right? Because we didn't necessarily know about Alex Mack until Kyle Shanahan said in that press conference, uh, like something along the lines of he's he's across the country. I think you guys know what the situation is, which at that point indicated that he was retiring. Then when we look at the cards, it's either Brendel or Brunskill, in my opinion. Brendel was the starter, but it, 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 is, it isn't necessarily as indicative given that Brunskill was out with tendonitis. but I look closer into it, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, I go ahead and I look and I see, oh, wow, Jake Brendel and Trey Lance have a rapport. Jake mm-hmm. Brendel, last, last, the entirety of last offseason, right? Jimmy Garoppolo worked with Alex Mack. What mm-hmm. did that mean? Jake, uh, Trey Lance, the second, uh, second team quarterback, worked with the second team center, Jake Brendel, mm-hmm. who the 49ers yeah. have uh, kept for now the, the last two seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I de- like I delved into it a little deeper. Not only do, does he have the existing rapport, he was the guy who was the signal caller, uh, or who was the guy with Trey Lance last year when he was the signal caller, not only uh, with the second team, but on the scout team as well. <clears throat> and I thought that, that was important. Then we fast forward this year, right? We find out from the coaching staff, Kyle Shanahan says that Chris Forster, our offensive line coach, actually vouched for Brendel himself when coming over from, from the Miami Dolphins. And Brendel isn't your like amazing star tackle or star uh, level player at center, right? He's just an ordinary, ordinary backup. So when you get a coach to vouch for you when you're just in that position, that must mean that there's something a little extra boost that you're getting from Jake Brendel. So the 49ers end up signing him after the COVID season, which was last year. He works with Lance. He's the first guy to work with Lance, which I think is important. And then this year, fast forward, them two are working together again. Brendel is your first team center and he really fits what the 49ers want in an offensive lineman. 994 mm. RAS score out of a potential 10. He is one of the ooh, more uh, – RAS is the raw at, at athletic store. One of the more it's, uh, it's at, like, athletic offensive linemen, really. Trent Williams mm. spoke about it. Trey Lance spoke about it. Kyle Shanahan spoke about it. That's something that not – it's not just a number, right? You can actually see when you watch him play, uh, according to these players. And so that's important. And lastly, uh, before you go, Rambo, Jake Brendel – isn't only an athlete. He's really smart. Trey Lance said himself that Jake Brendel actually covers the entirety of the protect- protections. At NDSU, Trey Lance was in charge of it, so he certainly has the mind for it. But to see the center take over that role instead of a guy who has the mind for it mm-hmm. is indicative of how Jake Brendel's mind is. So Jake Brendel uh, covers most of the responsibilities in terms of uh, protection calling and all that. So... <clears throat> It shows that he has the mind to play center and also has the build to play center in the 49ers offense. Sounds good, doesn't it? And you know, here's the thing. Even and, and Trey knows that that's where a lot of direction comes from that center spot. Alex Mack did it for uh, for Jim. Well, Alex Mack does it for the, 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 the under Kyle. He's always done that, right? So if Jake Brindle can emulate that, and, and and Trey's already looking forward to that as well because he can trust him because what you just said that we got a good thing going there right away. I didn't want a guy coming in not knowing how Kyle likes to orchestrate and where he likes to orchestrate uh, his offensive sy- systems from. And the center plays a huge role, unlike any other team in the NFL uh, with Kyle. And that last point you just made is really important, right? Kyle, Kyle Shanahan has shown that he likes somewhat of an experienced guy in his system to play center. That's yep. why... Uh, he first entrusted Weston Richburg, right, on a five-year deal. He wanted a veteran uh, a veteran with that type of build for him to play center. Then, mm-hmm. after an experimental year where it was Daniel Kilgore and uh, Daniel Brunskill, <clears throat> he didn't go with that option again. He went with the guy who he knew in Alex Mack, who obviously played for him during their Atlanta days and had, the again, the mold, 
of a guy he wanted to play at center. And mm-hmm. now he has had Jake Brendel under tutelage from Alex Mack himself over the last yep. year. And now yep. with the year into the system, more acclimated, just like fellow offensive lineman Aaron Banks, they're mm-hmm. now both being placed into the starting line. Now, does, mm-hmm. does this mean that he's going to be the starter week one? Not necessarily. If he doesn't necessarily show out uh, when pads come on, because really we haven't seen much from offensive linemen uh, in, during non-pad time and during, uh, you know, during this time, uh, this period so far, mm-hmm. if he shows that he, the like what the 49ers believe in him is true during training camp, he gets the job. If not, uh, Daniel Brunskill and Nick Sakel will probably compete as well, and they battled it out to see. Can you imagine? And what's the guy name? His last name is West. Uh, Donovan West. Yeah. Isn't Donovan a center? He is a center. Yeah. But probably not exact. Why did Kyle pick him? So Donovan West was an undrafted free agent, right? So oh, that's right. Kyle, He's a UDFA. Yeah, huh. Exactly. So. It wasn't necessarily a pick for 2022, although many fans were excited about that idea, given he probably should have been drafted uh, when looking at his game tape, right? But mm. let's let's look at a couple of things, right? First of all, he did go undrafted, which means, uh, like, you know, normally the vibe, especially on a contending team like the 49ers, the undrafted guys are fighting for roster spots, not necessarily starting spots. And the 49ers, they probably thought the same, because West isn't your second team center. He's your third team center right now. The 49ers mm-hmm. have Keaton Sutherland, a guy who isn't necessarily special by any means, playing as their second team center just because he has more experience in the system. And so that's what I'm looking at right now. I don't think West makes the roster, unfortunately, to 49er fans. I, I, I think he is relegated to a practice uh, squad spot. And given that he won undrafted, I don't think that he's going to be picked up by another team on their 53-man roster. So West can really settle in. Uh, on a for with the practice squad, get a good amount of reps in, get uh, control of the system, get acclimated to the NFL, and then compete with Nick Zakel next year to be the starter. Um, if Jake Brendel performs well and gets a deal elsewhere, I tell you, I Zakel, everything I read about him, I love this guy. I like mean and nasty people on my football team. Zakel seems like an absolute jerk. I love it. It's like what Joe Staley said about uh, uh, Western Richburg. Uh, he actually, Joe actually used the A, called him an asshole. You know, <laughs> I said, you know, Joe, I like those kind of guys on my football team, uh, especially at offensive line. Is Zakel that kind of guy? I understand the whistle blows. Zakel pays no attention. Now, that could get him in trouble, uh, us in trouble during football games. But if he has that kind of mean streak, I'm already, I, I'm already impressed. I like him. Yeah, no, definitely. And, I mean, he is another 49er ideal offensive lineman. When you see his testing, I think he was the second-best tester of all offensive linemen at the Combine this, Ooh, this year yeah. in terms of athletic scoring. So he fits what they are. He's also 6'6", 315. So oh, I know who's that big. Woo! I know who's that tiny. big. Oh. And he, has, he has flexibility, right? He played at a small school at Fordham. So he played left tackle there, but he played a bit of guard and center uh, at the Senior Bowl. He, he wasn't great. Uh, we'll be totally honest, right? He wasn't great to start, but mm-hmm. uh, like as the week progressed, he got better during the practices. Uh, according to reports, and that's mm-hmm. that's promising, right? Especially given oh. a, a position that he picked up just that week. For and that means to, he's a p- quick learner. Yeah, I like exactly. that. Exactly. So, well, just because of the talent that we have currently, I don't anticipate him to start this year. He's been showing promise, and he could be in line for a starting spot next year. I think out of the two that we drafted this year, in terms of the draftees, I think he's the more pro-ready one at the moment. There you go. Ron, I, that's that's great stuff, you know, because anything that he shows promise, uh, you, you, you got to want to talk about it. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, at this point, right, it's all kind of unknowns in a way. We don't yeah. necessarily, like, know what any of these guys are going to do because we've never seen them in an NFL actual game, right? It's all mm-hmm. been practice and uh, how the player is, the person of the player, and just their archetype. But – Again, like you said, the word is promise. And when they show promise, that's something that you look forward to when they get that opportunity. And, and, and you embrace it. Well, that's all we can do right now. Because as soon as things happen, we're going to see preseason games, and we're going to be crying our eyes out because 
you anticipate certain things from certain people that are going to have to help us because we're, we're deficient in some places. The secondary, I'm sure everybody's going to be paying really close attention to the secondary and the offensive line. Those are the two places where people have the most concerns. <laughs> you know, if you, if you take a poll, you know, the running back room, I, 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 every year we can go through running back room anxieties because that's the way Kyle Shanahan's offensive system is. We're going to see a whole new group of guys next year and the year after that. That's just the way it goes with Kyle Shanahan's running backs. We, Rowan, we haven't kept the same set of running backs two years in a row since what? Since Kyle got here? So you know, <laughs> since Kyle got here. Yeah, so it's, that's I'm used to it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. exactly. And I mean, real quick on the running backs, I heard an earlier caller talking about Jordan Mason. Jordan yeah. Mason is very, very intriguing, not only because of what he's shown so far, but just because of his build and what he does. He yeah. is big. That was a big show. Have made a shift this year into trying to get bigger style running backs to fit Anthony Lynn's more power scheme. Uh, or uh, he, he likes these big bodied running backs. I mean, we've yeah. seen Melvin Gordon, DeAndre Swift, but not only DeAndre Swift, who did the, who did the Lions sign once Anthony Lynn was there? Jamal Williams, who's a power back. And yeah. so now we have Tyron Davis Price. Elijah Mitchell bulked up to 220, I think. Davis Price is around Ooh. 222. And then Jordan Mason is in the 220 range as well. So, you know, you got three yeah. big bodied backs, which yeah. gives some promise to maybe Jordan Mason potentially making this roster. Of course, from, I put out potentially. He's an undrafted guy, but that's there. But, Ron, the thing is, from what you just alluded to, this should be actually something that Trey Sermon should appreciate because Sermon is not a stretch zone stretch runner. And this is I think he's more of a north-south runner than he is anything else. So maybe he makes this with Anthony. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that could be the case. I think a lot of people have penciled Sermon in. Not uh, just because he's the third round pick from last year, right? I think a lot of people have penciled him in for a roster spot to potentially cut uh, Hasty or Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah. I do think Sermon makes the roster. I'd be surprised if they cut him this early into the ro- uh, into the contract. I do yeah. think there's some guaranteed money even uh, included in his contract, as opposed to the other two guys I just mentioned, making it a little bit of a liability to cut him. But uh, yeah, I mean the the new build. I, I do I, I think it's important to have diversity. I don't think you should only have power backs. I think mm. the change of pace backs, which Elijah Mitchell at times when he was healthy, right? Mm. Remember, he was oh. lingering with a knee injury for the entirety of last year. When he is healthy, I think Elijah Mitchell can serve as something like that. Oh, and he God, added yes. the bulk so that it alleviates some of the injury concerns. Hopefully. Rowan, always magnificent, Dad. I'm telling you, let's, we, we, I got to go. And uh, if you got time for a sunny, get you in here as soon as possible, all right? Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, Rowan. There he goes. And you'll see him on Four Yards Web Zone, Rowan Charcarthy. I, think I was practicing Rowan's name the other day. And uh, he's, got, he's got great articles. So check him out. Four Yards Web Zone for Rowan, R-O-H-A-N-C-H-A-R. You'll see it. Uh, and, hey, hey, Bethel. Hi, Rumble. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Bethel, you got a feedback going on there. You, you need to close the speaker down Ooh. or something. Uh, let me see. Testing one. Can you hear me better? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it's gone now. Bethel, okay. so, so tonight we're, we're, we're talking about uh, some of the things that are being said. I had X Factors, but uh, I'm looking at Jawan Jennings and Kyle Shanahan's resonating statement that's still booming in my head. Yeah, no. Jawan gets separation, gain separation better than anybody on any other wide receiver on this team. He didn't say gain separation better than anybody else. He said better than any other wide receiver on this team. And I said, <laughs> Kyle, you, 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 you've been smoking that stuff to get average. Come on, man. You, what? I mean, I, I, J- Jawan looks good to me, but come on, man. Are you serious? And he, didn't, he was serious. And it's like Nick Bosa said the other day about, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, he looks pretty good to me. Drake Jackson's doing things I couldn't do when I was a rookie. What? Oh, don't get my feet. You're toying with my emotions here, guys. These guys are just coming in and looking. They're impressing you. Nick Bosa, you're talking like that. Kyle doesn't say things like that about his receivers. He went on a talking yeah. great about jo- uh, Jawan. His blocking ability plays bigger than he is. I mean, he, just, he loves him. Wow, look at these praises. And, we like, and Jake Brindle, as you just might have heard from Rowan, maybe that's our starting center, I got a feeling. See, that's why we like to get these guys – that have something to prove because yep. they give you everything you they give you everything and that's what you want they want you know because they have they got something to you prove. know especially yeah especially to the other team that they didn't draft them that you know said you know what we don't want you 
So, you know, the Niners believed in me. The Niners are, you know, giving me a chance. So, you know, they're going to give it all they're out. And, you know, they're going to do what they can. And, you know, you know another thing, that's why uh, the Niners are not signing a center because they already have a plan of what they want to do. And it makes sense. So, you know, Jake Brindle, yeah. it's like Kyle says, anybody that's a backup, uh, you can rest assured that, that he can come in and start for us. We, we, we have all the faith in the world of starting him. And I didn't, didn't think about that. You know, because Kyle Sandin's system is not that easy. You can't just come in from another another place and just come in and play center for Kyle Shanahan. You can't, you can't really play anything for Kyle Shanahan. You're just walking in on the field. It's complicated. Yeah. Some things need to be, you need repetitions so you can get it firmly in your mind of what you're supposed to be doing out there. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and, and then plus another thing is that uh, I know people, you're saying about, you know, people throwing long bombs. Uh, <laughs> long bombs are not all the time. They're when, when you have a chance to throw a long bomb, you throw it. You know, if they're there, the opportunity is there, then you throw it. You know, but if they're not there, you know, throw it short, you know, throw whoever's open, and that's it. Because I don't know how many times I've seen the running back or Kyle Juchek right here, you know, in the bottom open, and he throws it to somebody that has two receivers, uh, two guard, yeah, receiver on them and not you know, even open. The best thing is throw it to the bottom. He'll probably get some yards. You know, it's better to get something than to get nothing. Nothing. Because That's true. Because that makes it better for you to, you know, get a first down or to, you know, you know, get what you need to get and, you know, and get that touchdown. Because, right. you know, it's like uh, what I say in the NBA. Sometimes it's good to throw two-pointers and make two-pointers that make nothing. Yeah. Because those two-pointers, they three. add up. True. Yeah. Yeah, and, so. and, and you know, and also this team, you you don't uh, people get confused about the fact that Debo and George Kittle. You, you, first of all, it's an advantage to have guys like Kittle and George because they could catch the ball five or ten yards from the, from the line of scrimmage, which is an advantage for the offense. It's not a detriment because now yeah. my offensive line is not stressed. The defense hasn't set up good. I got a guy out in space that can do tremendous amounts of damage, and we're going to go downfield and wear this defense out. Everybody gets bo- – people get bothered by that. I say, well, do you understand this game of football? It's not about the beautiful, long, rainbow pass downfield. When you have Kyle yeah. Shannon's offense, you're putting guys like George Kill and Debo who who kill a man for trying to tackle him. They're going to rough a team up. You're hurting that team. Defensively, you're wearing them out. You're keeping them out on the field yeah. a lot longer. It's, it's, it, it's a process – it's an intentional process. It's not, well, I go a quarterback can't throw the ball. No. Watch the game. And that, granted, Jimmy wasn't perfect. He did miss, like you mentioned. Uh, there's some guys yeah. open in the flat. And also, he could have went to. It's about options. But a lot of times, the quarterback will always yeah. go to the guy he trusts the most. Juice should have been hit more often. I don't care what anybody, yeah. Jimmy or anybody else says. Juice should have been hit more often as well, though. You're, da- you're, you're absolutely and right. And then... Uh, and the week seventeen, uh, if I remember right, I think they were throwing the ball a lot to um, Debo, and then he started getting double team, and then they started throwing it to Ayuk. Yep. Then he started getting double team. Then they started works. throwing to Jenny, yeah. and, and jo- you know, jo- uh, and, jo- and, jo- and I, yeah, and I, if I remember right, they all had almost a hundred yards each. Yep. That's the way it works. It's everything's a strategy. Yeah. The ball, people, some people are confused. They think he's just out there. Uh, the quarterback's just out there doing whatever he wants to do. No, they've rehearsed what they're doing all week long. It's called the game plan. So, so you know, yeah. when, a, when a coach comes out there and installs a game plan, he doesn't want you to go out there and start doing your thing. Do like we practice because we made it work in practice, and we should be able to make it work here. So, it, it, anyway, yeah. That's that's why you're exactly, you're absolutely right. So yeah, so you know it's you know so it's always good to have all your good players because you know like you always said when they were doubling Debo, 
Jawan Jennings was straight out open. Why? Because they were doubling him and they're not paying attention to they him. Better. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George Kittle gets George so, Kittle has been triple teamed. You'll see sometimes a linebacker yeah. go with him, a corner, and then a safety comes pulling up as well. And there's George surrounded. Now you've got guys <laughs> that better be doing their thing. And that's been rehearsed as well. You know, yeah. so, you know, it, it gets crazy out there, but it happens in the blink of an eye. That's why also yeah. you've got to make decisions. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hurry up. You know, it's tough. Yeah. So, Especially you know, and stuff. that's why, you know, that's why, you know, right now it's always good for practice and preseason is always good for practice because then you get that field of everything and, you know, it'll, along, you start improving along every game so yeah. you know it's you know it's, so it's, it's, i it's, think it's gonna be it's gonna be really good uh I, you know what i wish i wonder how I really wish yeah. they had more time to practice. Every year they get a small amount of reps. Yeah. You know, we, we got new guys coming in this year, right? So now they got to go in and get up to speed to catch up with the guys that have been around for a while. This always worries me. I never talk about it much. But I, re- I, rem- I remember um, when we had four preseason. I always said it's always good to have those four preseason. Now people are kind of, you know, wondering, ah, oh, they should not took it out. Now they should have just kept it. Yeah, you know that's the reason that they keep four of them because yeah, no. they need the practice, they need yeah. the reps, reps, more reps. It takes a certain yeah. amount of reps. Robert Sally used to talk about that all the time. You know, after a certain number of reps, now you're ready to do this and do it properly, and you should be able to execute. Nice. I knew that. You, I learned that back in high school. It takes a time to get really good enough to beat a defense, and it and in defense the same thing. I know my position on the field, where I'm supposed to be. I'm known, you got to know where the spots are. You got to know to react yeah. to certain things. After a while, you're getting smoked in the beginning, or you're messing up really badly because coach is calling up, yep, yeah, run, book, get over here, man. Let's go. Hey, guys, run that back again. Guys, listen, it's not rocket science. You know, then the coaches start to embarrass you, you know. But it's about doing yeah. it over and over and over again. It's crazy. <laughs> so, But new guys are going to yeah, have trouble no. with it from the beginning. Yeah, and then the last thing I just have to say is, you know, I, you know, I know Kyle Hurd, you know, he's kind of, um, kind of hurt that Trey Lance, you know, left his daughter. So, you know, you should not be talking about bad about the kid only because, you know, you're, he left your daughter, you know, that's, you, wait, wait, you wait, 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 Bethel, wait, 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 that's a true story? Yeah, they were, yeah, you, it is. I saw that, I thought it was a rumor or a joke. No, Trey was dating hey, his hey, daughter. Yeah, and I guess he <laughs> left her or something, and he was I heard about and it. he started talking shit about <laughs> Trey Lance. I'm all like, "Come on, dude!" Like, I I'm thought like, that was don't put your personal business problems involved in this. Because, vessel. Yeah, I thought that you know, was <laughs> a rumor or a myth. <laughs> It's no, true. no, it was actually true. Yeah, damn, and, that's you know, funny. I, well. Yeah, it is. I'm more like, you should never put in your own, you know, personal business. You shouldn't just, even be mentioning you know, it. Period. Yeah, because now every yeah. time he says something about Trey, you're gonna <laughs> think, well, he didn't really appreciate Trey dropping his daughter like that. So of course he's not gonna say anything good about him. I thought that was. I heard about that a few months ago. I thought it was a joke. Hmm. No, it, it wasn't a joke. I'm not like, when I seen that, I'm not like, come on, dude. It's, <laughs> you know, you were talking good about him now that he left your daughter. Now you're talking bad about him? Come on. It's a natural action. You know, it, if you had a daughter that he was dating, wouldn't you be pissed off with him? I can't stand that kid. In fact, I'll be false flat on his face. My daughter comes home in tears. I wouldn't put it I mean, in, my, in my <laughs> business, in my work. <laughs> It'd be hard, though. You love your baby girl. And there she is. And the quarterback of the 49ers just hurt, broke her heart, or whatever the case was. I can't like him. In fact, I would recuse myself every time the story comes in. Uh, uh, Rumble story coming in about uh, Trey Lance. You want to do it? What? Hell no. <laughs> we got, Beth, we got to go, though. Hey, I'll see you Sunday. Okay? All right, bro. Uh, All right, see you Sunday. Uh, Punch the like, and let's go, Niners. Thanks, Bethel. <laughs> All right, good night, Ram. Wow.
wow, I had no idea. This is, I got enlightened again. I saw that story a while back, but the, really, no, it's not. What? Really? And now it's resurfaces. It's true. Uh, uh, it's everybody's other favorite Ram, Marketing Pro. <laughs> MP. Go ahead. Come on in. What up? What up, Rambo? <laughs> it's the world champ Rams in the building. You know, it's going to be a two-peat. Now, Rumble, I got to lay down some facts. You know, all the conspiracy theories in that chat were taking place over a few weeks. Oh, Aaron Donald's going to retire. You know, well, Aaron he, Donald's going to retire. Like he well, was, what? <laughs> well, you know, that was all, it was all mind games by the Rams to shake up the Niners. And look, <laughs> Cup is back. We pay the players. You know, Jed Dork need to take notes. You know, Debo should have already been paid. Uh, I, I sense he's calling McVeigh, you know, on the low, like, hey, hey, you got a spot for me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now. I want to highlight Kyle Shanahan, okay? I was reading an article today. You know what's Kyle's record without Jimmy Garoppolo since 2017? No. I, well, I, I know it roughly. 8-27. 8-27. 8-27. Oh, without him, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's Yeah, it's not even 10 wins. And, and he, these guys are making this guy Sean McVay, the reincarnation of Bill Walsh. Come on, he ain't no Sean McVay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So the 49ers are in an uncertain situation now. Trey Lance is unproven. And now the scouts are saying his hands are too small. That's what? why he throws Oh, no, not the hands. But, you know, remember, remember that out. year during, the, during the combine saying. when they were talking about guys, his hands were too small and became the biggest joke of the combine. Uh, you know, oh, you know what's really uh, funny? Your quarterback, that was the year that he came in, um, uh, Jared Goff, Supposedly had small hands, and and everybody started laughing. I said, you know what? What does this mean? So, I, I hope this doesn't. Uh, Where did you get that information from, uh, MP? You can look it up. All the scouts have put it out there. That's why Division One wanted him as a safety. It was because of the hands issue. Oh, no. But now I wish the kid the best. Now he might end up being good quarterback. But they, you know these clowns in here calling him the king of the West while the best quarterback in the NFL. First ballot Hall of Famer, all-time great Matthew Stafford is there. Like, how do you <laughs> disrespect the <laughs> legend <laughs> like that? <laughs> but you know what? I you you are outrageous, but I do find you amusing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just, and, and, and Matthew Stafford. I mean, Tom Brady. He's really shook up. He didn't want Matthew Stafford in the NFC for uh, obvious reasons. Oh, where'd you get that last information? Year, what did you watch the playoff game last year when he cooked them with that deep bomb to Listen, Cooper Cup? MP, I gotta you know tell you, though, the best Listen, triple. Yeah. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Now, now Brady had a bunch of people out. Uh, they weren't playing. That might have been a different story had he had some of his horses. Tom Brady's the last guy that makes excuses. You he know, didn't. he just, just wasn't just good enough to face Stafford. You know what I mean? Stafford is the best. He always been the best quarterback in the league. He's stuck in Detroit. Come in. How many times has Stafford beaten Brady? It didn't count on the Lions. I mean, even Barry, uh, the quitter Megatron quit on the Lions. It was that bad. Barry Sanders, in his prime, just walked out. But yeah. only Matthew it's not Stafford a place you want to play football. went the whole way with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, so no, now, no. now here's the thing. Now, we got Bobby Wagner, who's the 49ers nightmare. <laughs> we, we got Ramsey the Goat. That's a hey, blanket Jimmy on, on one side of the field. Jimmy's left. Right? Now, now, Bobby Wagner had, had a thing with Jimmy, but this may be a different story. Oh, this is gonna be easier now because one play Trey, he's gonna he's gonna be oh he's gonna be looking at one target and Wagner's a ball hawk. He's gonna he's the best in the middle of the field. He's gonna make plays and McVeigh's fine ability. Look what he did with Von Miller. He was dead in the water in Denver. He shows up to the Rams. Has and now he's uh, paid a lot of money. Season. Uh, in exactly. Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, he ain't going to be as good as he was on the Rams. I just want to put it out there. But <laughs> Wagner's about to have a Pro Bowl year. So, yeah, now, here's my projection for the 49ers. They'd be lucky if they win five games this okay, year. Okay, that's it. If we got to go, though. If, we, we'll, if you got time, we'll see you Sunday. How about that? <laughs> All right, boss, man. Hey, by the way, Rombo Sports, like, subscribe. You, you scrubs in the chat better start liking <laughs> <laughs> and, and that Baldy Rob, he just fool, you know, Rombo's the realest sports platform. He ain't like that bald headed Rob just just <laughs> selling you the bullshit like Jenny Craig. Oh, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Good idea, MP. <laughs> There's something about the way he talks. It, it, he's got a little bit of a, 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 a southern twang <laughs> that makes me laugh. 
And, he, and then people say anything. Hey, hey, and Ellis loves him, some MP. <laughs> it's funny, Ellis is coming in right behind. MP, get ready, man. He's getting, you know he's going to do you. Hey, Ellis. <laughs> oh, God. Ellis. Oh, Ellis. Hey, Brock. I'm on. Brock, yeah, still on. Uh... Yeah, it is getting late, huh? Where did they call it? Ellis been it passed out on us. Ellis, where you at? Ellis is never this late. And I know the kids are keeping him awake. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, we're done. So anyway, yeah, it is late. We started late because of the uh, the Warriors. That was a great game, though. That was, boy, that was a hell of fun. Fam, I'll be back Sunday, and let's talk some more 49ers football. Please, subscribe so I can find you when I get ready to talk football. I want you to be here to join us. And also, don't forget to hit the like. <laughs> and thanks for the contributions tonight, guys. Always appreciate it. And we'll see you Sunday. I know! God. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs>